finally here, ladies and gentlemen. The moment we've all been waiting for. No matter what side you're on, it has been years in the making, and we are finally here. Not talking Rock vs. Roman. Not talking Cody Rhodes finally finishing his story. Not even talking Edge and Christian having an incredible dynamite main event in their hometown. I am talking Kendrick Lamar, J. Cole, and Drake. We are finally here. The subliminals are subliminal no more. We've all waited. If you are a hip-hop fan, we have waited for this exact moment for years and years and years. I hate they stepped on my guys, Big Shines new release he ain't been in here for years and then drops a banger ain't nobody talking about it we can talk about that later or maybe never again but i do want to talk about kendrick drake and j cole and let's talk about it in wrestling terms if you could think of any wrestlers that you feel the same way about in regards to we've never gotten this feud or we've never gotten this matchup We've been waiting for it. We've been wanting it. It is the top of the top of the top of the class. Who is that? Who is that for y'all? I'm not prepared to answer that. So I'm going to go with the low hanging fruit and I'm going to go with the stinger and under and undertaker. <laughs> well, okay. Maybe years and years ago, but you wouldn't want that now. Would you, mm-hmm. if they both could be under WWE contract and do it at WrestleMania 41, you, you, you still don't want. Sting and Taker, right? No, but I haven't had time to think about that question. It would have to probably be like, we've gotten a lot of Forbidden Doors dream matches already. So, mm-hmm. I, I, Leia, I'm going to stick with Sticker. I'm going to stick. I'm going to stick with sticker. the Stinger. Sticker. <laughs> the Sticker. The sticker. The stinger. Get em. And Undertaker. I'm okay. sticking with that. Yeah, you know, I also don't follow match rules, so I'm going to go with uh, <laughs> a uh, Shawn Michaels versus The Rock match. I've never gotten... You know, a match for my number one to my number two. Um, you know, I, I, I think that there was some kind of personal beef back in the day, you know, back when Shine was an asshole and Rock never got over it. So we never had that match. And they've crossed paths. Um, it's a shame, but that's the match. We would have I to go back. Got. Maybe maybe Shine just wasn't there when Rock was big. Because think about it, Rock's run was only – Three or four years, right? And wasn't at the time Sean was out with his back injury. I don't think they mm-hmm. ever were at that same level at the same time. Yeah. So it, there was an opportunity. Um, you're right, because you know Rock went to Hollywood, went away from Hollywood, right? Right. right. Um, but you know Sean's last match. Gosh, what was his last match? I got it right here. I was looking at some stuff. Uh, his last match was with the Taker, right? Mm-hmm. At Mania. Yeah, the mania. I don't have the year next to me. Here. And Rocket had been gone at that point. Mm-hmm. And even um, before but... that, when he went out, it was in that casket match. And he was gone for like three or four years. And then when he got back, him and Triple H were feuding. But I don't think Rock was there. And if Rock was there, that was when he put over Brock. And then he left for Hollywood. Yep. But he's, he, was a, he was physically able to come in if if there's a possibility, right? When Sean was yeah, there. Yeah. And and it never happened in a dream match. Even after Sean had retired, you know, he still maybe a year or two after he retired, man. I mean, I know he retired, but mm-hmm. there was opportunity, but and we never got it. I, I I heard that Rock was never interested in a match with him. The match would have been great. I just I mean the story, I I don't know about I kind of you forget a little bit just how good like Shawn Michaels was. I'm playing showcase in 2K. And I just did the uh, I did the Taker Shawn match, and he was also in another match, I think, right in the showcase. Shawn Michaels. Yeah, he had the ladder match. Oh, Kurt, uh, Kurt Angle. He was in the Kurt Angle yeah. one. He was in the ladder match, and it's like, damn man, he's had. I mean, he's one of the goats. Bangers. You yeah. kind of yeah, you kind of just forget like where he's at. Uh, so okay, that, those are two good ones. For me, this is the equivalent of finally getting Rock and Roman. That's the low hanging fruit. Yeah. Um, but more importantly, probably CM Punk and Roman Reigns. That's kind of this okay. for me, right? Like, because I'm talking now the promo battles on the mic, pushing each other 
you know, a little bit more than what we're seeing just on TV, just some of those remarks and, and that kind of thing. Still working together. It's still a team, but I'm going to push you and I'm going to see if you are as good as you think you are both ways. Hmm. So uh, I'm excited. I am, I am really, really excited for this is going to be hip hop at its finest. So but hopefully can't, everybody can't out there. Over, though, really quickly, Precision by Big Sean. If, if he has a project and it sounds like that, Oh, he's it's gonna back. be a big four. It's gonna be a big he's four. Back. <laughs> he's back. Hey, is is the Miz the big shine of of wrestling? Who, I like that comparison. Who Just is the lyrically. big shine of wrestling? Maybe. But you, Maybe. you're saying always consistent. Yep. There always you consistent. Know, not not the top tier. Mm-hmm. Uh, underappreciated. Underappreciated. Mm-hmm. Underrated. But can go, can go with the best. Yeah, that's a drop of a dime, right? I would think maybe a little bit. I would probably put Sean a little bit higher than Miz. I mean, Miz is a Hall of Famer, but like in the ring, typically we still get surprised when like the Miz goes. Like I can't remember that one match he had months ago on Raw, but we were yeah, like, "Damn, yeah. Miz, did somebody take you backstage? If you don't job. perform, you out of here." Yep. And he like went for it, but he went for it with somebody in the ring that could go, right? Like typically, you don't see. Miz in the ring with somebody who is not the best. And we're like, damn, Miz really carried that match to like a four and a half, five star match. And I think Big Sean, when he's on his game, can have the best 16 bars on any song that he's on. So maybe I would probably go with something like, maybe like Hangman Page in AEW right now. Okay. Right. You know, like was at the top for a moment. Who knows if he'll ever be at the tip top again, but you always kind of going to have him around like, that semi-main event, that upper, upper, upper mid-card. But we know we got still the, you know, Swerves, the Adam Coles, whoever you want to kind of put in there. And to mm-hmm. me, that's like the the Drake, the J. Coles of it all. But I think another conversation we should have, I think I think another conversation you have is like, we should do like a versus battle, right? Do a tournament, right? And we book who wins the tournament. It's just based on, it could be wrestling, my skills, whatever the case may be, right? Who will win in that match? And I think it would be interesting to see. We had a vote on the Miz versus Hangman who would win, right? Because if you go off wrestling ability, mm-hmm. you might say it's the Hangman. But if you go off mic skills, Just charisma, right? it factor, like Miz would kill him, right? But, 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 ten, but depending on the wrestling fan, they might see Miz as more of the lower tier guy, whereas yeah. Hangman, the way he's presented in AEW, is, is an upper tier guy based on a different set of criteria. So I think it would be interesting. Maybe we can come up with like some kind of fan tournament or something let's put that together this is episode 118 so we got 119 this week we got 120 next week 121 maybe that's like 122 123 sounds good let's do that 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 would be a lot of fun because you're right because depending on what you're looking for your answers could be completely different hey the feud is starting by the end of this feud who do you think is coming out the best and then it's that person and then we can talk about you know why we said that that's a good one well, we are on episode 118, y'all. 118? That's Freaking Wrestling, TFW Podcast. Y'all know who we are. Three to Haraway. I'm your host, Matt, joined by my usual suspects, co-hosts, Ishan and Rhodesia. Y'all know the deal, man. Shout out to y'all for listening, for watching. We appreciate y'all. We love y'all. We don't do this without y'all, of course. Thanks for being on this ride with us. Let's get into SmackDown. E, you kind of, you say you just watched SmackDown, so let's start with you. Because it's super, super duper fresh on your mind. And let's start with that main event segment. Cody Rhodes, Roman Reigns. Then we get the uh, the folks coming in at the end. Stare down. Video package complete for WrestleMania is going forward. Because we got the sign in the back. And we're off the air. What was your thoughts about that main event segment? Really good. I think it did exactly what we needed to do. I think we need we needed more segments or interactions with Roman and Cody, right? Because they are going to be the main event one way or another at WrestleMania night too. Mm -hmm. And as we talked about last week, you know, it's been more about Cody and Brock, right? Than the actual main event at night too. And we all, we talked about how like Rock's personality kind of overshadows Roman in a lot of ways, but when he out there doing his thing, man, he's, he's on like, he, he's out there. He's doing this thing, right? He showed why he's been the champion for, you know, 10 years plus at this point, you know, <laughs> wrestling two times a year. You know, he comes out there. He He's a star, man. You know, like them sweatshirts are catchy. 
You know, something like, I, I will, I will, I will wear something like that, right? Not because necessarily because it's it's bloodline related because it's true right. to me, right? Like mm-hmm. family blah, blah. I mean, that's that's my motto, right? So, um, and I think that Cody did what he needed to do, and I think you see like their different styles and their personalities. I know everyone talks about that Cody needs to be something other than who he's been portrayed as, and I think that's who he is as a person, right? And he's kind of stayed in his lane, and he retorted to Roman's. Uh, sentiments because Rome is really good at like that um like he has like a certain like uh I I don't say I got you type style like battle mm-hmm. like like where you know Cody had mentioned like man look you we don't even know who's the uh, the, the 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 main guy in your faction is it the final boss or the, or, or the head of the table and Roman is confident like man that's old you said that last week it's like right <laughs> like he just kind of really this breaks down like stuff real quickly, right? But real mm-hmm. subtly. But in the way his promo is, he's, I don't want to say, he's like just very cool, calculated, very witty, very, very confident, right? Way different than Rock. Rock is the big personality type of guy, right? He's singing, he's smiling, he has all these super big catchphrases. Roman Reigns ain't a catchphrase guy. He's to tell you what it is. And he was telling Cody what it was. And I think that Cody did a good job hanging with him. And he was like, man, look, I could be number two, but come WrestleMania, I'm going to be the one. I'm going to be the one to end the streak and take your belt. Clown, get out my ring. Hey, but before you do that, shake my hand. Right? Roman was like, nah, man, I ain't shaking your hand. All right? I ain't shaking your hand. Right? But he's making himself look like he can't show... Like what that like that uh he can't be like uh he, he's he being an asshole essentially right you can't you know show good sportsmanship by shaking my hand man okay cool I'm just gonna get out so then he shakes Paul Heyman's hand right which I thought was hilarious right but still you're you're seeing who's like from a um good guy versus bad guy level who 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 it really is uh, so I thought it actually did a really good job I didn't see the very end of it because it was kind of last but I will say that. Um, we've talked about the music, Roman's music. I said, I wasn't necessarily a big fan of it. I, I think it suits him, uh-huh. but as it's going off, uh, you know, my oldest son, Ethan was sitting there listening to him. He's yeah, mm-hmm. man. Mm-hmm. Music is goaded, mm-hmm. man. I don't know why you don't like that man's music. <laughs> final boss. Oh, it was the final boss. That that's what it felt like when he first, I was like, Oh, this is, I get it. He, he is the boss in every video game you've ever played. That music's playing in the background. That is Roman Reigns. That is this. This piece of it. So you know, you, like you know what you 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 know think about that. So you were a Street Fighter guy back in the day, right? Yep. So you know how like Bison was like the guy throughout mm-hmm. the game. Just like that's the guy you thought you had to beat, but the whole time it was Akuma. Yep. You think that Roman Reigns is Akuma and Bison is uh the Rock? If he's saying the final boss, that means the final. There's nothing after the final boss. Once you get to the final boss, it is over. So. In that analogy, 100%. Because that's what it is. So, so you're, you're a hype on it, which is good. So you, you were big on it. Rhodesia, what was your thoughts on that segment? Real quick on the final bosses. Man, to this day, Shinobi's final level was like goaded for me as my most favorite final boss. Um, and of course it wasn't really a final boss. It was the final level, but it was just that, that sound of that Japanese, like, you know, this is it. Like your heart rate is high. So when you mentioned that, it kind of got me thinking street fighter. It got me thinking about Shinobi. Mm-hmm. Uh, so anybody who has played Shinobi, they know exactly what I'm talking about. When you get to that I've final board. I've never gotten to the final board. That game was too hard <laughs> to get to the final board. Like the final board. It yep. was pretty hard. And yeah, my mama, like, we had just a like league. Double Dragon. Double Dragon was super hard. Like, I don't know who I the know, hell ever beat Double yeah, Dragon. Got, nope. Ninja Gaiden, I don't know who the hell ever beat like nope. Ninja Gaiden 3. Oh, like, me and my homeboy the- got to the end of Double Dragon. <laughs> Did you? The original yeah, Double Dragon? It. Yeah. Because at, at the very end, it was cool. Because at the very end, um, I forget their name. It was Jimmy and... <laughs> Jimmy and Jay? <laughs> I would say it's Jimmy let's and Jay. Let's roll with Jimmy and Jay. I forget what the guy... Jimmy was the red It was the red guy. And shout out to anybody who's into Double Drag. I forgot what the guy in blue was. His name was. Jay. But they had. Jay. He's Jay. He's Jay. Jay. So, right? Jimmy and Jay. Jay wears Actually, blue. Will... Jimmy wears red. Yeah. Jimmy it will make Jay. sense, right? It will yeah. make sense. And so at the end, like, them two dudes, they had to fight. 
And I think it was fighting over the girl that they had. They came to say, of course, of course it was. Of course, oh, hello. It is always over fight. a woman or money, guarantee or land. If you own something, if other than that, we're not fighting. We piecing it up, dapping it up, drinking together, chilling together. But you put one of them situations in front of a guy, it's a wrap. Yeah, I could never beat uh, Double Dragon. I had to move over to Final Fight, which was super easy on Super <laughs> Nintendo. And I was, I was like, all right, I, I can do this. Final Fight is. Yeah, I can do this. It's like Simpsons was super hard on the NES. Yeah. Like, yeah. there's so many games that they just made it. I don't even know if there was a Final Boss. It was so hard. Like, well, I think they then, just like stopped Shinobi, the game. We, my mom. Literally, because, you know, back in the day, you, there was like no data where you can save the game. So we just turned the TV off. And my brother and I, we left to probably go grocery store or somewhere. <laughs> my mom came and turned She unplugged it? Off. She cut that joint off? I was like, what in the... <laughs> we come back. I'm like, are you serious? So we never beat Shinobi. We just got to the final level. And like I said, and I remember, because we worked so hard. Damn. I said, we. He really was me. Really him. But I was watching him play it. Um, but Damn, Rhodesia! You just made me remember. I, for, I forgot about that's that. I, we didn't. We couldn't save. No. We couldn't save back in the day. We had passwords, maybe. You, but you had to get to the password. So, like, if you didn't get to the password, I, I remember they, they introduced the passwords. But before the password, Rhodesia's right. You had to. Just turn you had to just turn off. the. You had to turn just TV off. Keep the game running. Yeah. Keep or keep beating in one setting. You had to beat in one setting. Like nobody beating this game in one setting. I forgot about that, man. We come a long way in gaming, y'all. Jeez. Or you, or you make a mistake, and this happened to me too before. You make a mistake and hit the Nintendo, and you mess and hit the reset button. <laughs> I've done uh, that before. I never had like, Super Nintendo, yeah, so I don't know. I've done that before, like because the buttons were on the front of the system. So, like, say, like you're sitting close to the TV, your knee could hit that joint, your foot could hit that <laughs> joint, and if you do, like, you start at the beginning. I've done that before on Mario. Damn. <laughs> Man, we need to we come, come out with we, we come video up, games. We, can we come that. a long way, y'all. <laughs> we have. Hey, shout Jeez. out to te- technology. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We don't have to keep the system on anymore. <laughs> like, it auto-saves. Auto-saves is the best. Yeah. All right, sorry. We went on a tangent. So, yeah, uh, final segment. Um, so, this is kind of hard for me to, what did I really expect? Because I have been so spoiled with having rock. I always called one time. Oh, I have one time. Every Friday, right? Every Friday, whether it's on Instagram, IG, Twitter, and then follow up with the uh, PG version of what he just talked about on his uh, Friday afternoon video on SmackDown. So not getting that. Granted, we got Roman and we got on the Pat McAfee show. It was like, I didn't really, I guess, expect to see Rock again because we've seen him so many times. And to the exact point of what he was saying, you have Rock and Roman. They're polar opposites their or they get their aura two different ways rocky is electrifying and he's going to pull people in that way where roman is just so confident in himself he doesn't need to do mm-hmm. anything so you get this just completely vast difference of what to expect in a promo so i guess at the end of the day i didn't expect rock to be there maybe was i looking forward to having that excitement in that final you know stare down granted we still have this week coming up it just seemed lackluster to me but again, it probably was lackluster because you didn't have The Rock, this most electrifying guy in sports entertainment there. Um, it, it was predictable. We, like you said, we got the final shots. I guess it is what it is. So I'm not actually, I'm not going to shit on it because I, I'm not going to say that it was bad. We got everything that we needed to get out of it. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't necessarily feel like, oh my God, that was a wonderful face to face between the two of them because we knew that none of them was coming along. It, it, it just did what it's supposed to do hopefully got some extra eyes on WrestleMania or people who wanted to buy it. But to me, it was just, it was just there. Can that be Ain't an nobody answer? buying pay-per-views no more. Where just snap out of it. Oh, you talked about it? the, thank you for buying the pay-per-view a couple <laughs> episodes ago. Nobody's buying pay-per-views anymore. I've been so far WWE, removed from buying anything. So yes, I don't it's even on either know Peacock what it is. Peacock or the network. Ain't nobody going to their local cable <laughs> company and calling, talking about, I need to see rock and Roman. Let me order that wrestling show. It's over, Rhodesia. We did that back in the eighties and nineties. No, we, we, don't we do still doing it for AEW though. We are doing for AEW though. That is true. Yeah, you got to call Bleacher Report, and Bleacher Report never works. No, uh-huh. hey, but you also you you also can get it on your your cable though now too. It's there. Okay. Yeah, you can't do it through YouTube TV. I think you got to do it through Bleacher Report. But um, see, for for me, so to me, it just seemed like it was it it checked every single box that you needed to get. You got you had to get Cody and Roman by themselves. You had to get that picture because again, they are the main event of night two. Um, you you got to show the Jimmy and the Jay. I mean, it, it, it everything you would want from kind of yesterday or from SmackDown this last week, we got it. 
to me, it just was anticlimactic for me. To me, yeah. it was just anticlimactic for me. You guys and were I, being really, really nice on it. I it was flat. It was super flat. I it was it wasn't needed. Nothing happened in that promo. Of course, this is all just my opinion. Nothing. There was nothing new that came out of it. the The big part of that promo was, "Can you trust your partner?" We've been there. We've done that. We we didn't need that again. The other like. Literally, the only reason for having that segment, of course, sell tickets, because you're saying Roman and Cody's going to be in the building, but it's to get that last shot. I wasn't joking when I said that. Like, when they got that last shot with that WrestleMania sign in the background, and you had uh, Jay, you had Cody, you had Seth, and then you had Jimmy, Solo, and Roman. That's what that was for. Okay, now our video package is almost complete. We know we got Rock and Roman coming to Barclays uh, next Monday for Raw, which since they announced both of them, they've sold like 4,000 more mm. tickets, which is unreal when you think about mm. that. But uh, so we know we're going to get the that go home segment on that show. And then I don't know what they have planned for that SmackDown. It just it was it was. It was flat. It was really flat. There wasn't a lot of passion behind Rock and Roman. I did think Roman did show that Cody and he is a cut above Cody. When they were having their back and forth to ease point, he was kind of sound like, dude, you said this already. Like, okay, what's new? Like, what else do you have? Like, you're, you do, you're a politician. All you do is kiss babies. Like, all right, we want to do that. I thought that was a fun thing. But I did think after watching Roman on Friday, you know, I had said uh, with The Rock that The Rock knows how to command the spotlight. He knows how to show himself bigger on television. I do think watching Roman on Friday, part of that is part of the plan. I don't think Rock's personality and aura is just that overshadowing of Roman I think that's part of this story because like he snapped right back into the Roman that we know and love when he's by himself so I don't think he's cowering down I think that's just part of what they're doing like okay hey the rock's the main character tonight when he's out there he's the main character yeah in this promo segment so when it's time for you Roman you'll be able to kick it back up that's that was kind of what I thought I I I just thought it was kind of like I, I left it thinking like that was it and like even before because we knew nobody came alone right like we knew that so i'm mm-hmm. like okay i don't really expect physicality because it's kind of early for physicality but i'm like all right we need something and we got nothing out of it like nothing changed with the match i don't personally think anybody felt any differently after that promo segment of oh cody's definitely winning now or oh man roman's definitely winning now i don't think that i do think this though and tell me what you guys think i think that segment did more harm for Cody than good from a fan pers- perspective perception. I don't I think, think I should answer that question just because of how maybe I feel about Cody in this current um, feud. Cause I would say, yes, it made him look worse, but I don't know if that's just because I'm not rooting for Cody to win. Yeah. Um, it's kind of like um, if, you guys have been on the Cody fam bag- wagon for like the past two years. So if you are, aren't into him now, he's not going to say anything that's going to get you on his case. He, ha- he, he is who he is. He's confident in who he is. He doesn't have to come out there and talk all that big shit like Rock and Roman. That's not his personality. We know people like that. But he's confident. He's told this man, he's told his fans, I'm going to win. I'm going to beat you. And he's not the bravado guy. He's not a showy. That's not who he is. And if you guys don't appreciate that about his character, then you're not going to appreciate him or root for him at this point. So he's not for you. And that's cool. Continue to vote for Roman, who's going to lose. Because he needs to lose. He, he needs to do something else. Um, so that's why I say that. Do you think, that. I mean, you think I, that's the answer, though? Like, was, like, we've seen Cody in fantastic promo battles. And he's won his share of it. When? In, in AEW and WWE. Give me, give me, well, the AEW was three years ago, and I was a different character. Actually, I like yeah, Cody's. I like kinda, Cody's um, the last, guy, the last, but minus SmackDown. I like, I loved his last two to three on the mic. This, promo. this, this one wasn't anything different than the last couple he did. I, I don't think so. I, I uh, uh, uh-uh. I mean, yeah, I, well, I, I, I feel like ultimately, this is just the reaction most of the time when we talk about Cody. I'm not saying I have to be argumentative. I just feel like if you're not a fan of his style and his promo, because that I, I don't know what we were expecting more than what we got out of that segment. When we got a couple of weeks later, they're not going to go to blows, right? So it's just going to be them talking and expressing, you know, themselves and doing more character work. Um, I just, I just, it was fine. If you, if you're a Cody guy, you're, you're, you're there. If you're not, you're not, I don't think it harmed either one of their cases. I think they show who they were in those segments. And I think they're both confidently 
express themselves in a way that's going to sell that show. Hmm. Yeah, I, I just felt like it was flat. I, I didn't think neither one really had a great performance, which is fine. Once again, you can't, you know, nobody's batting a thousand in any job that they have, right? You have off days and just watching that. I was like, oh, okay, it was, it was, it was what it was. It was an off segment. They got their shot for the video package. Okay. And we move on to the next thing. Um, let's move on to Jade. I don't know if this is a legit backstage tussle with the USA Network pulling some strings because we don't know about the draft for next year. If even the, that's even going to be a thing still. But Jade to SmackDown. Bron. So you got LA Knight, Roman Reigns, soon to be Cody Rhodes, because he's going to, right? If, if we take it that he's winning the belt at WrestleMania, mm-hmm. Ron Breaker, Bianca Belair, Naomi, AJ Styles, Randy Orton, Kevin Owens, Tiffy, Tiffany Stratton, Logan Paul. <laughs> Raw is on life support for Netflix if Ooh. this stays the way it's going to be. So I really wonder if like the USA Network backstage is just like, look, this is who we want. You can make the, the moves now. Or like I say, if we do get the draft, but I am shocked that we are getting Jay on SmackDown. Um, but what's your guys' thoughts about her going on SmackDown and then the assumption is going to be she's going to be at Mania. So I don't know if you make that move now if she's not going to be in Mania in two weeks. So thoughts on Jade and then just what do you see her or want her to do for Mania? I'm not having the full roster in front of me, but just kind of what you just said on the SmackDown side. I think that that's probably the best place she should go for um, getting the rhythm in the ring with those people that she'll be wrestling with and dancing with. I think that'd be good for her. I just didn't think she was going to go there when Braun Breaker signed to SmackDown. I just knew they weren't going to give both of them to SmackDown. Um, And that's pretty much it. What was the second question you said about Jay? Mania. Now we know that she's probably going to be at Mania. What do you want to see her do? Nothing. Just show up. Show. Excuse me. I, was just, I mean, I don't want her to wrestle or anything. <laughs> just <laughs> just show up, nothing. look and look like yeah, look like a million bucks like she normally does, and and then we get a pop for her. I don't want to see her wrestling. Like, there's a couple people that like WrestleMania table has been set. I don't want you interfering. I maybe would want Andrade Andrade to interfere, but I don't want him wrestling like before Mania. Like, let's let's finish off Mania. Let's finish this Mania story, and then. Normally, the next Raw can open up brand new feuds and campaigns, but I don't want to see her wrestle. But we're probably going to get that with the damage control and Bianca um, and Naomi and Jade. So knowing that none of them have a match Mm -hmm. yet, Mm -hmm. why would you not want her wrestling and being involved in that match for WrestleMania? If we are going to get that, then I'm all there for it, 100. percent Oh, you just said you didn't want to see her at all. No, I said if we're going there, talking about those damage control versus the a multi woman match, mm-hmm. then absolutely. But other than that, no, I don't, I don't, I don't think I'll just leave it there. I'll just say no for right now. Uh, when I saw when I saw her uh, with uh, being announced on SmackDown, I thought that it's a good possibility she would mix it up with damage control gar- girls. Um, cause I think we talked about it. I said that, all right, we're either going to get Bianca and Naomi for the tag team championships, which I wouldn't mind seeing them being crowned tag team champs. Mm-hmm. Um, or we're going to have a six man with, uh, um, Dakota Kai being added to the Kabuki warriors. And then you're going to get, you know, um, Naomi, Bianca and Jade possibly in the mix. I think with her being on SmackDown officially, it's easier for her to be kind of added to that mix. Um, because why else would she be introduced to SmackDown if she's not going to be? Because like you know the the, the shakeup is coming at least what like a month after. Like I said, they haven't said they were doing the draft, but typically it's always in the past. It's it's April. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's usually soon after Mania, so then you're going to like shake up with, with the roster, which is always fresh to have. Um, but I assume that she's going to get involved. You no, know, she had had that. Ba- and of course, she has had backstage segments with a lot of women, right? And a lot of them has went nowhere. It just her putting a, a face in front of them. Um, but I thought this time, maybe she is going to be added into the damage control thing, right? Um, it's kind of what, it's kind of almost similar to what they're doing with the bloodline, right? Like people are being, like the damage control is out of control, like, right? And, you know, Bailey's can't do this by herself. She created this monster. But now we need to gather a team to take these girls out and get control. So 
that's where I thought. And actually, continuing with the damage control thing, I actually kind of like the little story they're telling with Bianca and Naomi and Bailey. You know, I, I like that Bianca's coming there and I'm like, look, man, just because you a good girl now, I don't mean that we friends. Like, matter of fact, we still got problems. Yep. Like, so, right? And I, and I it's like- It's layered, man. It's and I like that Na- Naomi is like, look, I get, I wasn't here, but I wasn't here. Like, right? So- I can't control that. Like, I, like, I can't talk about the past. I don't like what's going on right now. I'm doing what I think is true and right for me. And I don't like seeing them ganging up on one girl. I'm going to be out there. Right? And at the same time, I'm like, look, and if you my girl, like, I need some help. So you come out and help me. Right? So now you got the Bianca's conflicted because she, like, still got super beef with Bailey, as she should. Like, right? I'm sure that, you know, like, their beef is unsettled. She took the championship from her. Right? So now at this point, I'm conflicted because this is my home girl, and y'all can't be ganging up on her like that. So I think it's a very interesting dynamic and story they're kind of ter- telling. That's that's true, right? Because I mm-hmm. think a lot of people probably been put in that position. Well, that and it goes against what used to be Vince McMahon WWE logic. Vince McMahon WWE logic was Bailey turns, and now all the faces just enjoy Bailey. We're we're just all there for you, and it's kumbaya, and we're hugging in the middle of the ring and shaking hands and leaving to each other's entrance music. That was like the logic back in the day. And it's like, no, now, and that's why I say it is so layered because there are so many different ways you can go with this story. I saw a lot of people on social media saying, all right, Bianca Hill turn coming at WrestleMania. And I can see that. I don't know if that's the right thing to do. I think because then that, that's like, then that's not, yes, that is logically the next step for wrestling. But if we're talking, we're doing a much better job of telling these layered, realistic stories. She shouldn't change who she is. Right. She shouldn't have Bianca to. Bianca shouldn't change because yeah, she shouldn't have to. Correct. No, we still we we still got beef. You and Bailey. Like mm-hmm. me and Bailey, we still got beef. Either we sell it or we don't sell it. I'm only here to help my girl. And after that, I'm back on whatever I'm on. If that's Tiffany Stratton, if that's trying to go after the championship, whatever that is. That's all that you need to do. I wouldn't hate a Bianca Belair heel turn. I just don't think it's needed. But either way, I'm here for it, right? I think Jade is absolutely, y'all know I've been banging this drum. I initially was like, hey, Bianca and Jade for the tag titles. It's, it's going to be fun to see if they go with um, a tag team title match with like Naomi and Jade against the Kabuki Warriors, or if they don't put the women's titles on the line and go six women tag. You include Dakota, then you include Bianca, and now we go six women tag match. Uh, but Tiffany is still there, right? So I can easily see them doing Bianca and Tiffany. I think that's kind of quick. Though with only two weeks left, it meant mania is two weeks from night yep. two is two weeks from today. Yep. I kept thinking nuts. it was actually next weekend though, but yeah, but yeah, which is but, nuts. Uh, real quick, as far as the Jay thing, the reason too why I said I didn't want her wrestling because I was still under the impression, and evidently I must be wrong, that Asuka was hurt, so I didn't think that she was going to have a beat in a mania match. So that's why she I was, was out there moving around, she, she started to look good, yeah, yeah. So, but if you think about it, also they do a six um person match. Like with Jade, right? We talked about like, is she ready to go? That's been some of the, the concern with her, right? She can kind of hide and get in when she fits in. Of course. In the six, right? She can kind of come in and do her big power moves, which already we've seen night and day as far as how she can do spots, right? She did. She had a series of great spots in that in that Rumble match, right? She can replicate something similar in a six mm-hmm. woman person. And then I'm, I'm not sure the severity of the injury to Asuka, but she also can kind of hide herself hide her. in the six right? person Same match. Same thing. So it kind of makes sense. And even you go tag, you can still do it. You can still have whoever it is, right? Bianca or Naomi do the heavy lifting, selling 90% of the match. Hot tag to Jade. It could be the same thing. Kyrie is doing the majority of the work in, in the ring, tagging Asuka, you know, to take a couple big moves. So there's ways to get around it. Uh, but I do like what they're doing. I was just shocked when they said she was going to SmackDown. So I'm like, man, they are loading up <laughs> SmackDown. Um... Uh, Montez Ford put a tweet out Friday. Montez, they win their match, which I'm glad to see. They're going to Mania, which yes. absolutely deserves. Yes. And Montez Montez's in not a good way. He grabs the camera. He's over the top. And I'm just like, and that's why we are still where we are. And I put out, and I said unpopular opinion incoming. I was surprised how many people agree with me that He's a little over the top, and he's been too over the top, and that's stunning whatever he should be. 
if that is a big baby face, if that is a heel, and we saw him kind of try to do the heel thing with Bobby when they first got together, that didn't work, you know, partly because nobody really wants to boo Bobby Lashley. I think the other part was Montez was still trying to figure out what he should come across as on TV, and I think he's still struggling with that a little bit, which is crazy to me because if you watch that Hulu special, which should be getting way more coverage and talk than it, it did, because it's kind of gone now, right? They put all the episodes up. Um, show, it's such a phenomenal show. It shows them in, in such an incredible light mm-hmm. as a couple, of course, being black. It's beautiful to see that, you know, but like you, you just take away the, the race piece. These are two awesome folks trying to make it in the world of professional wrestling and doing a, a damn good job of it. But you look at that Montez and say, man, how can that Montez not translate? And yeah, we know that when they always say like, hey, Turn your personality up a notch, but it's like, damn, dude, turn down a little bit, maybe. Like it, it just it, it turned me off a little bit when he grabbed that camera and shook it because like I felt like it. He's like a caricature, like that did nothing to make me want to see them win more in Mania. It was just kind of a, a turn off. So for you two, because we hadn't talked about it, what's your guys' thoughts on? I guess just that spot for Montez, like what he did. I think the, you mentioned that when you posted that, a lot of people were agreeing with you. And I think that's the case because we all want Montez to do more and to be more. And we all support him in that. This time last year, we were starting to see a Montez that we thought that we can all gravitate to. Kind of this, he, we put up some weight, um, mm-hmm. but kind of a solo almost um, act and a little more serious. And then it just stopped after mania and he is suffering an identity crisis, but that's also because of how he's being booked because you first have him as a tag partner after we thought he was about to go solo, you bring him back as a tag partner. Now you throw him in this with Bobby and Bobby's always going to get cheered no matter what. And like I said, in the booking of Bobby, you can argue it or not, but they're doing a terrible job with Montez as well. So let's also put that out there. They don't really have, and it could be because there's so many people already at the top. So there's only so many spots. But for Montez, I really do think that he needs to find who he really is and just vibrate on that. And whether he gets over or he doesn't, because to me, when he was shaking that, I'm like, you look like a clown, like, and not in a good way, but in a bad way, because I know you can go in the ring. You are super athletic. Like that shit, people should be able to say, man, Montez is a force not to be F with. Oh, but you're shaking your screen like this, like oh, then he's he's a jokester, kind of like sometimes. Again, <laughs> I'm shaking my my screen over here. Um, but it what reminds me his impersonation. <laughs> it was it was it's reminiscent of sometimes when Seth acts goofy. Like, listen, you are the ish. You are the sh- own that and be in that. And I like I said, I, it starts also with the booking of Montez, but book Montez differently and then i think he'll just shoot right off like you book him like even like a la night but again that means he would have to be a solo act mm-hmm. book montez as a solo and let him either crash and burn or shine bright and i think he will shine bright i had that bigger problem with it y'all i didn't care one way or the other it didn't do anything for me as a fan to think negatively about him or positively you know, i Figured that's something he wanted to do in the moment, right, man? I don't know, man. You know, like I'm a I'm a pretty low key guy, but I have my quirks and do things weirdly in a moment. You know, that's maybe that's one of his. Maybe he has those, right? I don't, mm-hmm. you know, I've like and and I know, I know they have their writers, um, but like it seems like the wrestlers have a lot of input on what they're doing nowadays, right? Maybe that's just kind of who he is i'm not sure how he was traded in that uh hulu special i don't watch those kind of things but you know those things are also edited as well right so they could probably take certain things out and trade things in a certain type of way when they want to but maybe that's just who he is and i'm okay with that if he has if he's a quirky guy let him be a quirky guy like i'm all i'm all right with it if that's who he is because that's what he comes kind of comes across as right now we're talking about the booking of the pride and no one wants to cheer bobby people were were kind of I mean, when was boom? I mean, mm-hmm. I felt like he did a better job with hurt business, and maybe that was because MVP was there. Yeah. Um, but the booking of those guys was very strange. They were booked to be heels, but they're playing it as faces, and differently than the way Drew's doing it, um, to where he just says things that are s- true, 
but it's the way he kind of his actions and his backup of, is what kind of makes him heelish. Um, they were just being like good guys, but they were booked as as heels. So I'm okay with Montez. I mean, maybe some people just don't have it like that. Right. Like if that's his personality Damn. and if you, if it rubs people the wrong way, but I, I think it's quite the contrary. I think people like the prophets. Like that's the reason why people want to cheer him. Um, he only got booed and what, who's the wrestling he got booed against? Was it Chad Gable? It was, it was no, it was the U S title tournament. It was, it was LA Knight. LA Knight. And people yep. were behind LA Knight. Right. But other than that, people cheer him. So like, you know, if he's quirky and he's, has you know what we might think is eyeball qualities i don't think that's something we should chastise him about it is who he is as a person yeah i mean that may be who he is as a person it just doesn't fit his it doesn't fit his character it doesn't do him any good that Mm -hmm. is the point right like we've we've seen him do that already with taking the kids and playing with them in the crowd and doing that thing we it feels like we should be a little past that like it feels like okay now we're in the trajectory of taking montez ford seriously not saying he needs to be serious but taking him seriously into the next step of whatever this is and we're not there yet and when i see stuff like that it's kind of like fuck man like figure out who you are and let's, hey let's listen they that. WWE might to market those kind of things because that's why he did with the kid that was in a signature video mm-hmm. for like years right yep. yep so there's a good look there's a good portion of people that actually like that kind of stuff what i'm saying like i don't I just don't think we should be so hard on on those types of things. I think we were correct when he's supposed to be a heel, and he was making that. He has that little, you know, like um, Powerhouse Hobbs does the same thing. He has like that little snarl. half, like like that yeah, snarl. And it's yeah, weird, like and but, then they stick it, they yeah. stick it. <laughs> but you know, Hobbs, well, Hobbs does it. He looks kind of menacing a little bit, like when <laughs> you know Montez. He don't got he ain't got the face for it. Yeah, right, he's, he had he's, a, he's this cutie pie. He's a pretty yeah. boy. He's a pretty boy. Heel. That's yeah. who yes. he should be. Yeah. He is a quick witted, pretty boy, yeah. cocky heel that dresses incredibly. That looks mm-hmm. better than you. I yep. smell better than you. I know yep. I'm better than you. Mm-hmm. I can go better in the ring. I can my jump higher than you. Beautiful. Nobody's touching me. Look yep. what I got on my arm. That yep. is who I want Montez Ford to be. But you know what? That, that. I, I, but obviously that's not who he is, though. Right, it's kind of like when Naomi was trying to be like the bad girl, right? She said she had a hard time playing the heel because yeah. that's just not naturally who she is as a person. He just might be a humble, silly, quirky guy, and maybe he doesn't have a gear to be that mean, nasty, arrogant guy, right? Which is great, great on him, right? Because sometimes, like you know, back in the day, back in my day, you know, I thought it was all right, right? But when you look at Bianca, like you're like, damn, you know, I might have a shot. Like, no, when you see who she got, you have no shot. Because she has mm-hmm. a very handsome, mm-hmm. put together man, like right, like that is a, a couple that they look great together, and it's great that he has this beautiful woman. He looks the way he looks, and he ain't got a he ain't got like the a, 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 I guess a bad guy quality to his persona. Lean into that shit. Lean yeah, into that, it. But that's the thing. Let's book him that way. Let's book yeah, lean him into that it. Way. Make him, him do it. Yep. Make him do it. We want him to champion. Man, I'm trying to get 2026 Montez for WWE champion. Uh, e, you brought up um, Drew. So we know on Monday night is Raw in Chicago. CM Punk, Drew McIntyre. What do y'all want to see out of that, just real quick? Because we haven't really talked about it. I'm joking. <laughs> we haven't really talked about it. So we know Drew uh, CM Punk's cast is off his arm. He showed that last week in a training video. So I'm going to assume there can be some physicality if needed or wanted. What do y'all want to see with Drew and, and Punk? Okay, so I'm still under the uh, assumption that Punk really was never hurt to the level that he first said. Is that safe to say? No, because he doesn't have a WrestleMania match. Mm -hmm. So my thought was always something would happen. He's tired of hearing Drew's mouth, and he's like, okay, Saturday, Sunday, I'll be there. You Mm -hmm. show up, and we'll take care of this once and for all. That's not happening because he's got a match with Seth for the title. So we know that's not the case anymore. I want something to throw some kind of speculation of maybe it's a chance Drew will not win the championship because whatever it takes to to get me there, because I already know there's a done deal. Drew's winning the championship. I'm assuming Drew has resigned. Those are certain assumptions I'm making. And Drew's, no matter what happens, Drew's going to win the title. So to make it to where there is some doubt that's there, I want Punk to do what Punk does and and create that doubt in my head head and plant a seed in my head that nope maybe he might be part of the chaos come night two that I told you is going to be straight chaos in that match as well 
So whatever he does, that's what I want out of their face to face Monday. You know, I'm going to do it early because I, I really didn't necessarily have like a, a, a bold prediction for Mania. But what if, so honestly, I think nothing will come of it. I think it's okay. just something to get Punk out there. But what if Punk comes out there, right? Cause he has like the little weird cast on whatever it is, and maybe he can work in that. And he challenges Drew to a match at WrestleMania night one. Night one? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what, a, what a prediction. Yeah, what a bold prediction. A he, here's, here, I'm not done yet. So what if he challenges him <laughs> to a match? You've been talking all this match, right? You're talking all this smack. You know, you getting paid off my likeness with your shirt. You know what I'm saying? How about this? We wrestle WrestleMania night one. And the winner of our match wrestles Seth Rollins <laughs> at night two. Right? Somehow CM Punk's wins that match goes on to wrestle Seth Rollins, right? Beats Seth Rollins. And that furthers Drew's spiral around like, you know, he wasn't ready for the match and, you know, yada, yada, yada. It kind of gives them more of a, 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 of a storyline going into, going after Mania. That's a, a bold pick I have um, for Drew and CM Kudos. Punk. I like that. I but I would only want I like that, that though. I would only want that that full outcome of what you said there if Drew didn't resign. Um, but I, I love having a match on night one. I love that. that that's... Especially because he can spin it as if you're as good as you say you are, Seth mm-hmm. is wrestling twice, mm-hmm. you wrrestle twice. You know, but, th- th- there there's a way to do it. But it'd be difficult sure. because you know, Drew is being he's actually like, you know, in wrestling logic, we that's how stuff happens, right? Like, but Drew is like, man, look, I watch wrestling. Like, why would I, why, why, why would I do that? I have yep. my match set. So I'm going to beat be Seth. Like, right. Why that. would yeah. I do that? Yep. Like, yep. right. So. That's good shit. All right. You know what? Actually, let's go to the bold predictions. You kind of brought it up. Uh, Dwayne had sent me a text. You and I had to eat about, Hey, he, he wants us to do like a segment about like bold mania predictions. He gave his. And he said his bold prediction is for The Rock, Jimmy, and Jay's already against Roman, but and Jay to get together, turn on Roman, and form a new bloodline with whoever else may come in. Okay, so you got Rock, Jimmy, and Jay as bloodline 2.0. He also says he sees, remember, once again, this is a bold prediction, right? Things that probably won't happen, but if it happens, hey, I'm going to put it out there. He also sees Seth turning on Cody due to jealousy and whatnot, and Cody does not finish the story because of it. So now you have Rock as the high chief, and he goes on to battle a babyface Roman Reigns uh, going forward, which 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 would, would be fun. So that was that was Dwayne's um, bold Mania Forty prediction. If y'all got some, of course, send them our way. Y'all know how to get hold of us. We're on X at that's F and W YouTube. That's freaking wrestling. Send it. And we'll talk about it on Wednesday's podcast. I may even do like another, uh, like poll or something. Rhodesia, what is your bold WrestleMania 40 prediction? I only have one prediction for WrestleMania 40, but just to be clear. Yeah. Just to be clear. What is this definition? The exact definition of bold prediction. It's a swerve that you would like to see happen, but it probably won't happen. So you know, it's unlikely to to happen. But, so, like, but the key is I would yeah. like to see it. Correct. Uh, okay. Well, then I'm just going to go with it. <laughs> Roman's going to retain. And he's going to break Hogan's record. <laughs> there we go. But if bold meant just bold and you didn't necessarily have to like the swerve, my bold prediction would be there is no bloodline rules night two. And it is a straight up solo solo between Cody and Roman. That would be my bold prediction. Okay. But I don't like that. But that would be my bold, bold prediction. That's a good one, though. Because yeah. I think we all just know it's going to be. But, yeah, but if you're like, no, nope, yeah, it's going to be one on one. Yep. And Roman still beats Cody. <laughs> Let's go. That's crazy. The ones up. y'all, man, y'all on X are hilarious. It was so many people uh, yesterday who were commenting on uh, the video from a few weeks ago that we did, where I was kind of talking about like the Avengers in game type finish, and everybody's like, man, all that, and Roman still wins. So it, it's a lot of Roman fans out there. Uh, mine would be. And this is only because, so Pat McAfee, Roman was on Pat McAfee's show on Friday. We can deep dive this later. I talked to Rodriguez about this yesterday. But he said something really, really, really interesting. He talked about 
this run that he's on and how it, it is going is goaded. Nobody's touching this run. Like, yeah, I haven't had to win the belt 16 times because I've been champion for four years, you know, undefeated, et cetera, et cetera. He's like, I ran through everybody. And then you add on The Rock. Nobody could ever dispute this run. This run would be known as the biggest run and best run in the history of the business. And that really got me thinking on, okay, so then that was going to happen. Beat Rock while you're champion. And now you are stamped as this is it. In the history of the business, nobody can ever say they have beat all these people, right? He's gone through everybody. Cena, Brock, you name it. Orton, you name it. He's gone through them. Um, so then I was like, okay, so just say if we had to stick with Roman winning on night two of Mania to get to the match with Rock, and then he can drop it. Say if they were just like hell-bent on this, okay, well, this has to happen. This has to happen, that we got to get Rock Roman for the title. Roman has to beat him so we can tell the next story of Roman when he starts falling. Only way I'd be okay with that, even through the Avengers in-game piece, is if MJF shows up and costs Cody the title Ooh. on night two. I think that would be a big enough deal to where people would be so shocked and excited that MJF is in WWE and renewing his rivalry with Cody Rhodes that they will kind of sit back a little bit and say, all right, yes, Cody should have won. Yes, Cody should have finished the story. I can't believe they did again, but I'm kind of okay with it. So two things, that's helly bold. Helly bold. You just surprised me there. And two, let me guess. He'll go to SmackDown. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm He's joking. definitely going to SmackDown. <laughs> He's going to SmackDown for sure. <laughs> no, you got to put MJF on Netflix. You never know what that guy may say or do. Wow. So yeah, I, so that would, that, hmm. would, that would be mine. So do we have any confirmation if he still signed AEW? I just assumed I mean, he, he was. You would or assume is. so, right? They, they just, this past week, which we know they play internet games, they just pulled his profile off of AEW. Well, I think they always had his profile off, but like they removed like all of his merchandise or something with his merchandise chains. We're like, now nah, you can't pull it up. Wow. So that, of course, just could be, okay, hey, he's getting ready to come back soon, and that's to throw off the scent that he's going to come back soon to AEW or by some crazy wow. chance his contract legit was up. December 31st, they pulled the belt off of him. Yeah, we know he's injured, so he wanted to recuperate. And maybe they've been holding him just to show wow. up on night two. Wow. So, E, let me ask you, what would your thoughts be like, legit thoughts, if that was actually to happen? That MJF shows up night two at Mania, cost Cody the title. Of course, I know you'd be upset that Cody didn't win the championship. Would that soften the blow at all of that, oh, my God, MJF is in WWE? They put him in the biggest spot possible to debut and now we're getting an MJF Cody Rhodes feud in WWE. No, you know what? MJF would be doing me a favor because he would give he would be giving me five to nine hours of my life back because I would just stop watching WWE, <laughs> right? And now I can just now I can just watch focus on Dynamite and you no know, and me and Tony us grow that brand, right? We continue to come up with ways to grow Rampage. Oh snap! And so now I believe the exclusive contract will be up sometime uh, this year with um, WB. So now we can get ROH's own show, oh, and no. we can focus on hey, the championships hey, on that specific brand. And I would love to come on this show and have a new world where I am the AEW ROH independent wrestling correspondent. I, I, oh, my God. Like, MJF would just be giving me so much of my life and my time back. Because I'm always looking for ways to add more – add more hours to my day and certainly on mondays or whenever we happen on netflix i will get three hours of my time back oh my god and then i got on then friday nights oh yeah, i'm talking about girl get your purse we going out okay, we go going out we doing purse. our thing get your shoes get your get purse, get that purse. out of here right <laughs> so it'll be it'll be hey mjf thank you that would be awesome i would, I would appreciate that appreciate speaking that. of Girl, get your purse. It's one thing I forgot to bring up. Goldberg, you don't get your old ass out of here. Man. I ain't never seen an old hater. Like, Bret Hart was right about you. I ain't like that, what he said about Asuka. Yeah. Like, Asuka took your 
street. First off, he didn't nah, even nah, know it, 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 was, it, was the, right. it was it was the whole tone. Yeah, yeah man, like dude, it was the whole like, tone. This this dude sounded like he was like back in the nineteen sixties, man. <laughs> right? Talking about a black person. That's what it, it sounded like. I was like, like yo, mm-hmm. okay. Tell us how you really feel. So I'm glad I'm glad he he came out and told us the his true feelings on it. But let me tell you something, Goldberg. Everything about you, dude. Yes, you were a huge, massive name in the business, but you ain't got nothing to do with Oscar. You ain't got nothing to do while everybody's using the spear. Uh, that's like Shawn Michaels coming out and like bitching and moaning that the younger generation is using the super kick. More people do the super kick than they do the spear. Yeah. <laughs> like, come on, man. Like, yeah, get your old ass out of here. I ain't like that at all. Yeah. At all. You were canceled. Eh. And, and it's, it's like the way he did it, too. He's like, yeah, you know what? And then he's, he's trying to get a response from the others, like the host, too. He's like, yeah, you know a girl. You know, a girl took my beat my streak. Who? Yeah, like, a girl. <laughs> like the way he said it, like, like a girl. Like, you, did like it. you hadn't shared a locker room with her. Now, granted, we don't know how he, you know, is backstage and such, but that girl is just one of the best female wrestlers, like, of all time. Uska? You don't know Uska, like, like a girl. Yeah, yeah, that, a girl. Her name's Uska or something. U- Uska or something. That. Yeah. Yeah. The hell with you, Bill Goldberg. Yeah. Kiss my ass. <laughs> Let's and, do. Oh, uh, wait, 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 it's gonna be kiss my ass until he goes to AEW. And he has that dream match you guys want to have. Want him to oh have. yes, it is like. No, all I don't, right, no, Goldberg, I don't you care for Goldberg. Uh, Wolves is saying you're next, right? You're next. Who's you're next? Next. You're Who's next? next? Right. You're next. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you get your way, you'll be covering Goldberg and AEW. Man. <laughs> oh, we're talking about it. We're definitely. I have detailed reports on it. We're covering minute by minute. Absolutely. How many WWE um, video games um, on Twitter that showed Oscar giving him the jackhammer? That was so good. Oh, that, that was fantastic. That was so good inside. Content creators are going to con- going to mm-hmm. content create. That's for damn mm-hmm. sure. Yeah. Let's talk about um, Mount Rushmore. So WWE actually put up a a fun topic. I didn't even look at anybody's comments because I didn't want to like have that switch anything for me. But they put up a, a social media post a few days ago. And asked, what was, what's your Mountain Rushmore of WrestleMania main events? And I was like, soon as I was like, oh, that's a, that's a fun topic. So we're about to do that. Um, but E, you said you had a question or a thought about Mount Rushmore's. So what you got before we get into it? So everyone always does Mountain Rushmore's on something, right? But it, it's, mm-hmm. I feel like it's like five, six people. It's more, it's like way more people that are giving that are actually heads on the mountain. Right? So I'm like, man, maybe people just don't know how many heads they are on don't. this damn mountain, right? So they it's just don't. four, right? Yep, just four. It's, it's just four. So I just wanted to clarify and make sure that we doing four because I feel yes. like every time we do a Mount Rushmore, anytime anyone does a Mount Rushmore, it's at least five. They give at least five people. <laughs> yeah, maybe they think it's five. They may think it's five, but no, we're doing four and we're doing main events, Right. In the literal sense of main event, it was the last match on said card. So maybe we'll do like just our total Mount Rushmore like list, like on Wednesday show or something, where we will do just like, hey, what's your top four mania matches of all time? But right now we're talking about just the main events. Uh, I don't have mine in a particular order. Actually, I did mine from like this year, right? So I went the farthest back of my first one to like the most recent as my last one that I'm going to say. So Radija, you lead us off. What's uh? What's your first one? In no particular order. All right, so we're gonna go like just we're gonna go like just one, 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 yeah. two, 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 three, three, three. Or am yeah. I going all of? Okay, I put mine in order. Uh, okay, so I'll put order by year or order by what you think. Like, so your fourth. My number best. four is like the fourth best, right? So the lowest of the oh, Mount Rushmore. Right. Okay. I did put mine's in order. Um, all right, let me see if I can maybe switch mine. All right, what you got? So it would be Undertaker. Versus Edge Mania 24. And this is when I thought possibly Undertaker, one of the times I thought Undertaker was going to lose um, his Mania streak. He was and supposed he, to. Yep. And he didn't. He was so, supposed to. Yep. And Ed said, no, you can have that. Yep. <laughs> not, you ain't putting that on me. I am not <laughs> taking that streak from him. But yeah, that, that is a yep. legit true story. Mm-hmm. So that was my number four. That's surprising. You've never really talked about like that being one of your favorite matches. <laughs> Because, because here's the thing: you're saying the literal main event. Because yeah. so maybe Wednesday, if we decide to kind of tailor it to just my favorite matches of my Mount Rushmore of Mania, a lot of these were like not the main event. <laughs> so gotcha. it's hard to right. find the the main event of my Mount Rushmore. This oh, is it, wasn't, a lot it wasn't hard for me. No, it wasn't this hard, is hard for, me. for me. It was hard taking it down to four. 
I probably could have went easy oh, six to eight. So for okay, so when I was looking back at all the manias, there were some heavy hitters up there, but I I just didn't watch during that time. So I'm like, it can't be one of my favorites because I was I didn't watch it. So we gotta go two thousands and you only got what twenty years to go off of. Yeah, Bingo. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> e E, do you have that one on your list? Take your edge. Mm-mm. Okay, who you got? What's what's one of yours? Uh, so we're gonna go in order like that. I'm gonna go. Uh, it's gonna be uh, John John Cena. Okay. Versus The Rock. Uh, which one was that, actually? That was Is the that, was that, first match. I was going to say, was that once in a lifetime or was that twice in a lifetime? That was Mania 28. <laughs> which one was that? Mania 28 was the first one. Oh, WrestleMania 28, yeah. It damn sure wasn't WrestleMania 29. I don't think anybody has that on their route. Mount nope. Rushmore Mm-mm. of matches. Mm-mm. So that is your, so you're going, that is your fourth highest. Man, like this list is hard for me to flip, but I do have that match on mine. I have that Rock match on mine. Rock Mania 28. That was my next one. Yep, that um, it was just so much into it. The match, I know we're talking about the match itself, right? So we're not talking about the build, but the build, of course, was epic. We've never seen a one year build <laughs> of it. Um, the environment was incredible, being there live and everything. Yep, so I got that on mine. Uh, so I'll just mark that off now. Radizia, what's your second one? So it was at the um, first okay. once in a lifetime, John Cena versus Rock Mania twenty eight. All right, E, what's your next one? All right, I'm going. Let me get the actual year here. Okay. I am going. We already watched it. Wow. Shawn Michaels. Your top four, huh? Versus Bret Hart. Iron Man match. Iron Man match. And the reason why I'm going that, because that was the first run of Shawn Michaels' world championship. Like, you know, being a, being a Shawn guy. Mm-hmm. Um, that was my that was his first time becoming champion. So for me, that was a, a major main event. Now, again, as a kid, I didn't appreciate that match, um, but I appreciated what it meant for his career and for me being a fan of his. Got you. Okay, Rudy. I'm guessing you don't have that on your list, right? I do not have it on my list. Yeah, I do not have that one on my list. I do have. Let me go. Uh, if we're see, I can't. I can't, I can't break these down in like. Then do Yeah. I so then I'll just go from the farthest back. And of course that's Hulk Hogan versus Ultimate Warrior, WrestleMania six. Mega powers. I, I thought about putting on the mega powers, but, uh, I did not put that one on there. Unfortunately, Hogan could have been like all four spots. <laughs> he was the, he was that big. You, to you lo- back lost then. the privilege. Hogan. Yep. Yeah, he was that big, but there's no way I could not put Hogan versus Warrior for Mania Six on there. So that that's my earliest match, of course. All right, what's your third? All right, so it's going to be Roman versus Cody WrestleMania 39. And how and why? Because we ended the night with our fingers up. That was close to making it. I I just think that match is much better than people. The finish was so polarizing that it just came to be, if you love Roman, you love the match. If you love Cody, you hated the match. That's one of the better WrestleMania main events in a very, very long time. It didn't hit my my four just because my four is kind of like almost unbreakable a little bit. But if we're if, east to your point, if Mount Rushmore had five heads, that was probably number five. And I, I implore anybody who does not remember that match to go back and watch that match. They worked that match pretty incredible. It, and, like, and, I, and I don't understand, like even the Slammy. so the Slammies are back, and I think they're doing it at WWE World, which is just like Access uh, Mania Weekend, and they came out with their categories, and match of the year, Roman versus Cody's not on there. And I was like, okay, that's, how is that possible? But I digress, yes. I, I agree, be. that match was fantastic. It shouldn't be, absolutely it shouldn't be. You know, I always have a, um, I always find it interesting to listen to Rhodey's Roman Reigns taste because you throw up the ones, but at the same time say he's one of the worst main event wrestlers you've ever seen. <laughs> and then put him as <laughs> and put his match on your Mount Rushmore. I just don't really he understand. Aura, I just don't understand the, the takes. Talking about, everybody's talking about Roman. Like that's just it's undeniable. It's undeniable. Well, what they gotta do with you? You think he's the worst main event wrestler in the world? I don't think he's the worst main event wrestler of the world. I said that his matches are very slow. Who is, is the worst I'm main saying. event wrestler in the world, you think? Roman Reigns, she said. I mean, 
Taker has not Taker. I'm sorry. Um, Triple H has a lot of slow matches. <laughs> oh, wow. He has a lot of slow matches. Um, but I can see somebody saying that. Yeah, I can see somebody saying like, yeah, his main event run is looked back upon okay, but it wasn't the best. I can see somebody yeah. saying that. I don't agree. Like, I can see somebody saying that. Oh, I certainly I, agree. You, Triple, Triple H yeah, is well, I know you do. You hated. You hated his. Uh, his main event run. You hate his matches. I, he, and, he like, and, 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 and his, and his <laughs> run was a long over, ass time, man. Book. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> Triple H, the, the booker, you the love creative him. guy, love him. Talent. Hey, no, no, no. You. Paul Levick, great man. <laughs> Triple H, the wrestler. <laughs> um, My next match is Hulk Hogan versus the Ultimate Warrior. Because as a kid, go. man, like I still, I still was super invested in um, Hulk Hogan, and the run that Ultimate Warrior was on was undeniable. And I was so interested in the match because we always talk about like, well, for me, I gotta be invested in the characters and the stories, and I gotta care about who wins or loses that match. Mm-hmm. But that mm-hmm. match, I was really, really torn. You know, in that match. And I was at the seat. I was at the, the edge of my seat the entire time watching. I had no idea who to cheer for, like. But I kind of wanted the Archer Warrior to win. I felt like it was his, his time. So for me, that was just an important match for my childhood. So if you had to pick, who did you want to win most? I think I think I kind of wanted the Warrior to win. I think so too, but I can't remember. I just yeah. remember not being that excited for a wrestling match like ever. Because we've never seen two good guys wrestle. Mm-mm. And it wasn't like a good guy where you thought one of them was going to turn bad or yeah. there was any underlining issues of... It was none of that. It was like legit the top two guys in the business top wrestling for the... They, I, yeah, I remember sitting and just watching that match like this is the best thing I had ever seen. Um, so I think I may have won a Warrior too because I don't remember being upset when he won. But I also remember feeling like... It was just like all the all the emotions when that match was over. Um, such a good time, man. It's yep. once again doing that showcase mode on 2K. I was sitting there watching, and uh, t- uh, Corey Graves was going over the Eddie Guerrero Kurt Angle story. And of course, you know they'll break down really. So I know you don't know, but they'll break down like they'll just tell the entire story of that said match, going back from like when it started. So a lot of back in the day, it started at like a Survivor Series or a SummerSlam. Right. And the next thing they'll talk about is the Royal Rumble, what happened in the Royal Rumble. And then we get to like Saturday night's main event. And this was the the big piece of the story that made us get to WrestleMania. And just watching like some of these stories, you're like, man, there was some incredible stories done at some of these points. But some of the stuff was really, really bad. Like, I think we'll look back and it's only been, you know, a year plus or two years in the Triple H, you know, new regime. But I am just so high on what they're doing in WWE that I feel like you're going to be able to tell these types of stories via video games or documentaries for a lot of these. Like if they wanted to do a damage control documentary for an hour and a half, they could. What, what's been happening for the last two and a half years, you know, with them. And that's not a main event storyline. We know the main event storyline is bloodline and, and rock and Cody and Seth, but it's just, it's just really cool when you see like the thought that was put in some of these stories, but then you also think the other side, where, like, there was no thought put in some of these stories, and we had, like, 15 rematches every single week on TV <laughs> just to get to the next, you know, match or, or whatnot. Um, my third match, this has to be, I'm going I'm to put it out there now just to get it off the list, because this has to be on y'all list. Undertaker versus Shawn Michaels. WrestleMania 26. Was not. Get yeah, not even close for me. Well, and here. mainly, mainly not because it was, a, it was those match. The Sean and Taker matches were really good. Really good, actually. I, I, I would say, like, Triple H was uh, someone I didn't enjoy wrestling. Number two was Undertaker. But those matches he had with Sean were, were excellent. I didn't like the Sean loss. That's what I know on my list. Get the fuck out of here. So that match, or well, both of them, are literally looked at possibly as the best matches in the history of the business. And both of y'all did not have that match on y'all's I think you just forgot about it. No way in hell you put Edge and Taker on your list, but you did not put Sean and Undertaker. I'm telling we, you, we going to Peacock as soon as this podcast is over. The, the, we watching the, that match. No. The finish, the finish pause. matters. My, my, my final, the finish matters. My final is, is no, nothing's nothing's topping. My my number one. 
What's your number one? Uh, real quick before I give my number one, because it's about to be really anticlimactic. Um, when you said the showcase <laughs> in the video game, is this only on like the 40th edition one version of it? Like, or is that available on all the 2Ks? It's available on all, but like the 40th anniversary, you get mm -hmm. like, you know, wrestlers and skins and all that. But yeah, like the showcase mode, that is the, this year's showcase. A lot of times they'll do showcase and it's like 20 years of John Cena. Right, and it's John Cena's biggest matches, or okay. Triple H, you know, run at the top, and it's Triple H's run. But this one was just about WrestleMania. So then, um, when you say they would do like callbacks and tell a story, do you see like the live action replays of stuff? Yeah. Or just, so like while oh, you're playing, nice. like they'll tell you like, hey, throw you know Eddie Guerrero to the turnbuckle. You'll throw him a turnbuckle, and as soon as you do that, they'll cut to Corey Graves talking, and then the live action of that match. Wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And that then like cool. they'll show a few parts of the match, and then they kick you right back into the match where the live action stopped at. Yeah, they call it the slingshot technology where slingshot. they'll take the live moment from the actual match and then they'll slingshot it right into the actual um, gameplay. Okay, no, that's cool. I like that. Yeah, it um, is. I might watch you play then a little bit. Um, so my number one on Mount Rushmore is Roman versus Cody, WrestleMania 40. <laughs> when I oh put my, my finger in the Talk. air after all the chaos... <laughs> My number one. Oh my God. Renisha, you are something else. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You know, like the nice thing about our show, and sorry, I got to lose my voice here. Um, we all have, we're all different types of fans. And Rhodesia is absolutely the fan I don't like. Her takes. Don't worry. The feeling is mutual. 100% her, mutual. Her takes are just out of the control. They just. Jeff that Jarrett, Matt, I, I bet Jeff Jarrett was one, on one of these things, main events. He had been on there too. He ain't um, burning Edge and Taker. That Taker was great, but people no, but, got but, burnt. I'm gonna tell you, okay, at the end because the pyro just they ain't been back to Phoenix <laughs> since. So the, the the Takers and Shawn Michaels, um, because he said it wasn't on his list. I didn't know. I, mean, I didn't think Shawn was gonna win. So that is the reason why it didn't make my mouth rush more. I already man, knew he wasn't going finishes. to. I'm talking about the matches, man. I get that. I get that. But I'm talking about Give just how I feel dollar, about man. those matches. The finish matches. The finish matters, baby. You know that. I do. But man, how did, man, that is like, I just think that is one of the best matches of all of wrestling, let alone, I just knew that was, if it was one that was on all of ours, <laughs> that was the one I would have picked. Especially the, the their first win. Not necessarily the second one, because I, I agree with Rhodesia. Like, you kind of know. You knew that Sean was crawling, hanging it up, yeah, and that so that was that match was all about. It was a good match, but you kind of knew who was going to win. But like they first match, you kind of you didn't have that caveat no. there, right? That just yeah. was a a really good match, um, and you know Taker came out on top. But all right, yeah, so but for me, it was, for me, Sean just lost. It, it didn't do it for me. I expect you. I expect that match to be on your regular list then, Rhodesia. Come maybe Wednesday. Let's see. Actually, Let's actually, see. if I knew if it was one, we all got mm -hmm. Rock versus Cena, right? Don't we all have that one on ours? Up uh, for today. Yeah. Yes. E, you got that one too, right? Rock vs. Cena? Yeah, you said oh, it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so yeah, that would have been yeah. the one that I'm like, yeah. that has to be on everybody's list. Yeah. Which, what's your last one, E? It's uh, WrestleMania, WrestleMania 5. The Mega Powers Collide. Mega Powers Explode. Hulk Hogan, Randy Savage. Because for me, I always say that for me, the best matches are when I have the most investment in the characters out and outcomes and stories. And that was such a awesome story they told over a course of a couple of years like right with them teaming up and then macho man finally turning and it was just a lot of emotion and a lot of investment that culminated in the finish of that match and of course hogan still was hogan right and he ended up winning it was great because like macho man turned into like the perfect heel he turned into a very very good heel great heel actually um, in the course of that feud that you wanted to see lose and you got satisfied in, I thought it was everything. Do you remember that match, E? Like, remember it? Vaguely. What was your favorite part of that match? Or the part that you remember more than the, the else? biggest part I, I remember, and this is just off the top of my head, actually, is because um, Macho Man, I remember WrestleMania, well, I think it was four. Is that the double box set? Yes, that was the, when the, they did the, the right, or was it three? The, the, no, that it was tournament, three. right? Three was in, yeah, I think four was the tournament. Look. I'm sure four like, was the tournament, right? But I remember uh, Macho Man Randy Savage going through everybody with that, with that double axe hammer. Okay, back up to the top, hitting the big elbow drop. Yep, right. Come on. In this match, all of a sudden he he, he series, same series, double axe hammer hits the top, hits that elbow drop. 
One, Come two. On. He threw my Randy Savage off of him. Got up and started hawking out. I was like, oh my God. Like, right? I couldn't believe that the Hulk Hogan had powered out of a pin and went through the whole Hawkamania line. Like, th- that was just amazing to see as a kid. So, you are there, but you're missing one critical piece. Macho Man hit three elbows on him. And he it was it three? Like it was three. I remember it like it was yesterday. I don't remember he three. went up, and Rhodesia, like, nobody kicked out of no, Nobody. Elbow. Like, back, back then, finishes were finishes. Like, you didn't finishes have finishes. this. Like, hey, you kicked out. No, it wasn't on that. When we mm. hit the finish, it's over. It was over. So, Macho Man's elbow, one was, like, one of the prettiest elbows in the history of the business. But when he hit it, it was over. He hit the first elbow, didn't even go for a pin. He went right back up to the top. And wow. I remember looking at Tina, my sister, on that second elbow, we just made, we just looked at each other. And I was like, oh, my God, Hogan's losing this. Because nobody kicked out of finishes. So, now no you're doing three. And then, to E's point, Hogan kicked out, like, the match just Threw started five seconds ago. Mm-hmm. And hawked mm-hmm. up, and it was like... Yep. Yo, this Still is. Up. <laughs> this and it was amazing because, like, at, like the biggest thing, and I actually I missed that point, and, and Matt always hits it. No one kicked out of finishes back in the day like that. Yeah. No one kicked, kicked, kicked out of finishes. So when he did it, it was like jawing. He was like, "Oh my god, your mouth was dropped." <laughs> yeah. Like now you look at it and you're like, "Damn, you just killed his finish." Right. Like <laughs> next time y'all wrestle, y'all ever wrestle. I mean, other words, you got to hit ten. But in the time, well, you know, it's true to my my guy Cody, right? Everybody, everybody kicks out of the, the crossroads. Yeah, like right. everybody, like if he if he don't do at least four of them, and like, I know the match ain't over. <laughs> like, I do wonder right. how many he's gonna hit Roman with on uh, Mania. I do wonder. Oh, he, we hit him with three last year, right? I feel like it was three. Okay, I, or two. Mm, I don't know. I think. Hey, three. look, hey, hey, my man, uh, Sean Spears is back. He don't come out there with the crowd. And he going one. <laughs> Two, or we gonna count to ten. That's what's gonna take. Yeah, we gonna we all gonna do it together. We are gonna count at the same time. Uh, my last one was uh Brock versus Roman, and then it turned to be versus Seth Rollins at Mania Thirty One. I thought that match just did so much for Roman Reigns. He got his, he got the dog shit kicked out of him that entire match by Brock, and when he started smiling and telling him to bring it on, I thought it, that meant a lot to his trajectory. And he still wasn't ready yet because the crowd still didn't want it. But it was just like, okay, we respect this guy. And then for Seth to come in, and we call it the heist of the century, uh, was probably one of the more perfect scenarios that, that oh, you can find. Oh, I forgot about that. That yeah. probably would have been my other Mount Rushmore outside of WrestleMania 40. Yeah. So that is my four. Actually, you know what we should do? We should do a poll. Put it up on Twitter. Send me your guys' um, list, and I'll put it up, and we'll have the listeners and followers vote on which uh, Mount Rushmore they think is better. I think everybody I, has um, good ones, though. I got a, I had an honorable mention. Can we do that? Or no? Sure. Honorable mention would be Mania 39. First time ever having a tag team main event. And it was just so it was so, so good feeling that KO and Sammy won the titles off the Usos. And, you know, mm-hmm. I love the Usos. I love the bloodline. But it was just such a wonderful moment. Like, again, you just don't get a tag team main eventing your mania and i just thought that was a really great the the work in the match was great and then the outcome of it was even better because people a lot of people felt like ah, finally bloodline got something you know off of them so yep good stuff uh before i know rhodesia i think you got some ronda rousey before we get to that i gotta put myself over really quick <laughs> um la knight had an interview on busted open where he said something that I said back on episode 70. E kind of gave me some shit on it. Rhodesia, no. you kind of agreed a little bit with E on, no, it's not. And that was on when I said, what's his match with Roman Reigns? Too much too soon. Back in Saudi in November or September, whenever that was. And uh, came out and said, I actually feel maybe there was too far of a push, a little too fast. This is not to look like a gimped horse in the mouth, but a little bit of steady build going into a championship match as far as going for the U.S. championship or Intercontinental championship or something like that. Coming straight up to the WWE championship at Crown Jewel was a little fast where I almost worry that it might make people go, eh, they're not going to do this. They're not going to shove him down our throats like this, are they? There is that potential. At the same time, right now, I think I'm going to get a damn good spot. I don't know if I'm selling myself short, so I'm just cautiously optimistic. And that was almost 
damn near verbatim what I said back on that episode of he didn't, he kind of skipped past the U.S., kind of skipped past the IC. We know he's not going to win. Was that too much too soon? I just wanted to bring that up. When he said that, I was like, we talked about that, and there you go. So that's all. I just wanted to put that out there. Can I retort? Mm, if you want. I didn't look at him being pushed too soon for that. My thing was in my feelings in that moment, because I remember exactly how I felt about it. It was more of just while you're throwing him at Roman to lose. It wasn't about he's getting an opportunity at the belt too soon or being pushed too soon. It was the opposite of that. It was, hey, you need to take better care of L.A. Knight. And we know going against Roman and Saudi was he was going to lose. So mm-hmm. it was more for me. I didn't want him doing that because I didn't want him to look worse than what they were already booking him. That's how I felt about that. I got who, who else is it? Who else? Is it, who else are they gonna put in that match? Well, that's the only thing. Who else? Yeah. They nobody put there? at that time. Nobody else I'm would a, would been worth the Saudi man, match. Yeah. Who no, else is gonna be in there? AJ Styles in the first place. Which hey, is my man on steroids? Man. Or did he just figure something out? Man, AJ when looks I like a super heavyweight. Like, what are what are we doing, dude. AJ Styles? What are we doing, AJ Styles? Man, what did we, what did we see? And I saw him in a cut off shirt. In the yeah, when uh, when LA Knight tried to bring him to his own. Okay, that's what it was. We it bringing was that feeling like, back. Yo, yeah, man. <laughs> is he on a is he on a part time contract where he can get on these PEDs? The Rock showed him something. Hey, Albert, come here, man. Got something <laughs> for Al. you, Uncle Al. All right, Ronda Rousey, Rudy, what you got? Yeah, I don't have to give me any input on it, but I just wanted to mention she has a book coming out um, on April 2nd, and some context has come out about what she said about WWE, so I just want to read it. So okay. in her, a couple lines in her book, one says, it's hard sometimes to know where the evil, unethical, slimeball character of Vince McMahon played out for the cameras in, and the actual, questionably ethical, many times sued, and multiple times accused of sexual misconduct, Vince McMahon began. So she has that in her book. Um, She also talks about in her book that WWE has a troubling foundational sexist patriarchal, patri- I can never get that word out, uh, patriarchal She probably couldn't either culture. with the way her promos went sometimes. Oh, that sucks. Uh, That's bad. Jesus. Sorry. And it says that it was disgusting for the amount of sexist, degrading bullshit that female wrestlers had been put through. Mm. And then talk about the bra and panty matches and that the only reason why it was retired, it was like pretty much very reluctantly to have it retired. Uh, and then she had a interview too, like a, on a show called Never Been Told. And she just said how much of an absolute shit show it is at the WWE because they can't hold the story over my head and hold me, hold me hostage on my own career. I don't need anything from them and I don't intend on going back. So I can say everything that I think and feel why everybody else is still held captive by their organization. So again, we don't have to deep dive this as far as what she's mentioning about Vince and she even talked about John Laurinaitis too. Uh, But do you have any particular thoughts on this coming out saying we know that she's not with WWE anymore. So it's kind of fitting that you could talk about your old employer. Do you have any thoughts or feelings or any concerns about, this coming out now do you think she's doing this just to sell her books again and you don't want to put that on her like that because if it happened to her and she witnessed this she should voice it um but do you think it's just to get sales just what's your thoughts on it i guess um i mean, yeah i'll let her express her her truths right we know that the country kind of was a, a sexist country for <laughs> like at least our entire lifetime right like women have always been kind of treated like sexual things in a lot of different places so kudos to the environments that you know to kind of dispel that and you know WWE wasn't had to be i mean obviously it was the same right you had vince mcmahon doing what he was doing right john laurinaitis seems like he was just a total asshole you think about like so everyone has like a lot of people have very nice things to say about vince and they're particularly talking about what he did for their careers right mm-hmm. like a lot of people are very for very thankful for the position that Vince McMahon gave him. He was a father figure to a lot of these guys who probably had different, difficult upbringings as well. Um, and I think they're, they're seeing a s- different side of him that they weren't privy to, right? Not for some. So, but John Laurinaitis and Bruce Pritchard had never had like 
from what I've seen, they never have really a great positive energy. They've always seemed like people didn't, people are more against them than for them. Um, John Lewis and I always seemed like he was kind of presented as like, he's like just an overall um, asshole. He, I think he was, his role was to be the bad guy for Vince and he played his role. Um, he did his job, right? That's why he was so trusted, but he seemed like he was kind of a snake in the grass type of dude. And Bruce, so like here to think about Bruce, Bruce was a guy that would, this is just me about Bruce. Bruce seemed like he was the type of guy that to everyone else was pro WWE and Vince. But behind the scenes, he would kind of go back and forth with Vince on different things. Like, right? But ultimately, his job was, look, I gave him my opinion of what we should do. This is where he wants to go. So I'm going to do my job to give him exactly what he wants. So when people say he's a yes man, I've heard the opposite is that, you know, when pri- he understands that his role is not to give that negative to the workers and to the team, but behind closed doors, he will actually say his piece and try to go back and forth with them. Um, but I can see why Ronda Rousey wouldn't like him. Um, that's just my opinion. I mean, I don't look, I wasn't there. I don't know what she went through. Mm-hmm. Like, right. I, I know that women weren't presented in the best light and all these things are coming out of our own bit. So there might be some truth to a lot of the things that she's saying. And I think there's more truth to come with how these people handle these women in these, in these positions. What is your, what's your, what's your thoughts? You kind of broke it down what she said, but I don't think you gave your thoughts. Well, my thoughts is I'm happy that she's able to talk about it. Anybody who has witnessed things, they should voice it. Again, we talk about allies and we talk about people being supportive to certain causes. Like if you see it and you couldn't do anything about it in the moment for whatever reason, when you have the opportunity to talk about it because you have a platform, please do so. Now, if you get a couple extra book sales from it, good for you too. But yeah, I mean, if she, she witnessed this stuff and she wants to call Vince out for him being despicable, I'm absolutely proud that she's able to do that and that she can do that because where some people might come out and now their career is completely ruined, she's she's still a made woman. So whatever she plans on doing, I know in the book, she also mentioned that the reason why she had to leave MMA was because she has so many concussions. So for me to say all of that, I'm happy that she has a platform and she's able to speak out on how she felt about Vince. So, yeah, I'll, I'll say ditto to that. Mm-hmm. I think it's convenient timing mm-hmm. because when you bring up Braun panties matches, we've been off that for a decade and you signed with the company that did bra and panties matches. Mm-hmm. So that's neither here nor there mm-hmm. in her story. Now, if you want to bring up uh, the women that worked during that time period and have them talk about bra and panties matches, I'm all for it. I'm not discounting anything Rhonda's saying. I just think it's, it's, it's convenient. Um, and we know what she's saying is not inaccurate, mm-hmm. but when it's convenient like that, sometimes you got to kind of just look at it like a, just a little bit of a side eye, right? Like, okay, now it's convenient for you to kind of talk about maybe Saudi, right? You, you've worked in Saudi. You didn't have an issue at the time collecting that check, but now we kind of got an issue with it, right? I'll but never we, go back. But we don't know. We don't know that for a fact. We know she did it. We know she went kind of like with, if my memory serves me correct, Brian Danielson was still with WWE, right? Who was it that refused to go to Saudi? Well, Sammy didn't go. But, yeah. uh, which means, but I don't in, think they terms, wanted him KO to come. didn't go to support that. If somebody, if somebody in the stature of Ronda Rousey did not want to go, they wouldn't have made her go. That's fair, I so guess. Let's, so let, let's do that. Um, but yeah, that's kind of just where I'm at. Like, I, I'm interested to see everything else she's saying. Mm-hmm. Everything she's saying, I, I don't doubt or I mm-hmm. don't disagree with per se. I just think it's a little convenient. That's all. But it's still coming out. And so people say, you know, it's never too late. No, it's not never. That might be a double negative. It is never too late. So if something needs to be said and you have a platform, say it again, it's more beneficial for her to do it now so she can mm-hmm. get these and book sales. But if it still is the truth, it's never too late to tell the truth. What do, uh, what do you guys think you see Ronda Rousey next? What's her next major move? Because evidently she ain't going back to WWE is what she's saying. I'm never going back there. So that, so now if she stays in wrestling, that leaves only one major piece and that's AEW. Or do we Mm kind of see her being done with pro wrestling? If I have to say one way or another, she's a fighter. So I probably will see 
a run in AEW. I mean, she she showed up at ROH before. I don't think did she wrestle there? Or she just showed up that one night. I think she just no, she wrestled. Remember, night. she worked. Okay, and uh, yeah, they, they yeah, whatever. That's a whole another thing. Okay, I mean, I okay because she is a fighter. Um, that's something to her to her core. I'm gonna say that. I mean, hell, the book is called Our Fight, but I would say that I could probably see her in a, one more stint in in some type of wrestling capacity before she goes and sells into the sunset. Okay. You know, I want everybody to get their money, right? But when you look at Mercedes and the type of salary that she's commanding, like, what, what kind of salary do you think Ronda will command? Under that. Right? That's what Absolutely. I'd be, be like, look, you already, I'd be like, look, Ronda, hey, I love you. You've already worked ROH. So you've already, like, set the, the, the market for <laughs> what you think you're worth. So this is where you are. That, that, if I was Tony, that's what I would do. He's a businessman. That's, that's and that's business. the thing. I mean, I know that you know Tony's money is long, mm-hmm. like right. His money is long, but you gotta assume that she will want a nice, a nice setup. Yeah. I mean, I mean, a yeah, nice salary to go work AEW. And if I'm AEW, if I'm Tony Khan, I don't know if I want to comply to that. Like, right, depending on what she can bring to my company. Because the thing about AEW is that it's right now the way it's structured. It's a show for hardcore fans. I don't think the hardcore fans resonate with Ronda Rousey at this with time. But, but let me tell you something that did resonate with me, though, as a wrestling fan, is I really enjoyed last week's Dynamite. I thought it was a great show, hey, top to bottom. Shout out um, to that. He's getting ready because when Cody loses, he's getting <laughs> he said, ready. He's getting he he primed it. already? He's, he's setting the audience up? <laughs> yeah. Let's go, E. <laughs> What, uh, no, it, was, was there anything in particular that really like shouted out to you, or you just like the pacing of it? Was it the main event? What was it? See, well, see, I always give like, and that's I know that you guys are super hardcore fans. Like, if I don't like the show as much as y'all love it, it means I hate it. I always say the shows are really good, but I give constructive criticism and feedback on why things should be approved. And I think this week, from start to finish, from segment to segment, it was a better pacing for the overall show. I like the little storyline nuggets they had with uh, Mercedes. So let's get into like the first opening segment. Like, um, you know, Mercedes came out there and damn it, she looks good, man. She just, she knows how to present herself as a superstar. One of my main criticisms on AW with some of their, their, their stars mm-hmm. is that they come out there in gear that we come out there in, right? They come out there and like, you know, like, so, hey, so I'm getting out of the, a quick, a quick thing the other day, right? So I'm getting ready for work, right? And I'm trying to grab one of my white, t- my white t-shirts going to need my, my button downs, right? And I, I look at one like, oh, this month, this 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 month is kind of kind of brown. I ain't gonna wear that one. Look at this mm-hmm. one. Oh, this this one got it's it's it's, it's kind of gray. Like, oh, this one got like a spot. Like on it. I'm like, I'm I'm going through them. I'm like, man, these are some beat up white looking t shirts. I'm gonna have to wear a beater today, right? Cause at least that that mug is at least you can't see it above the collar, right? And that's how some of these AEW guys come out. Sometimes they have like the. That the t-shirts like they've been through the washing machine a couple of times and they need to throw it away and they need to get a new one. But Mercedes, when she came out there, she came out there looking like a bona fide super duper star. Man, she came out there looking amazing and they gave her mic time. So what did you guys think about the promo? Um, Matt, I think you may, I'm uh, not to skip you, um, sis, but um, I think Matt, how did you feel about the, the promo? I think you may not, you thought it was hit or miss? It was hit and miss. Yeah, it was it was hit and miss. It was a lot of regurgitation from the prior week. I think uh, the, her promo was to me the perfect correlation to what we saw on SmackDown with Cody and Roman. Regurgitation. We're here because we know the uh, we announced it and it's going to sell tickets. It's going to drive viewership for said people or persons. But at the end of the day, we got nothing out of it, um, and that's what it felt like. It just felt like part two of the promo that she cut the, the previous week. And to start the show, there wasn't much to it. You know, she kind of got lost a couple times, but that's I'm fine with that because mm-hmm. she's got to get back, take the training wheels off, right? She hasn't done this in, what, eight months has it been? And we really don't know at the level she's done this at without a script. That is a part of the game that is that's different huge. for her, right? Like, now you're going out here, hey, you got 12 minutes. Oh, okay. Go out there and talk for 12 minutes. So she's, she's got to get used to it. So it's, it's not a, of course, some people just completely shit on it, right? Like, oh, my God, it was horrible and horrendous. 
you got to kind of be able to see a little bit through like, okay, I know why you said that. Like you just don't watch AW or you're upset. She didn't go to WWE. Um, I thought it was missable, right? I didn't think it was horrendous, but I don't think it added anything to her. I thought her backstage segment. Now that's where the money was at with Willow and Statlander and Stokely, who is a damn Man, fool. That's where the money cost. was. Yeah. Yep. That's where the money was. What was your thoughts, Radija? Um, same thing. It, it was a little bit flat, but I'm again, 100% okay with it. You don't have to knock something out the park every single week. Um, Wednesday show kind of, I'm a little confused on because it was a three hour show. So I actually don't know where dynamite, I can't remember in my head where dynamite ended and where rampage, it was rampage, right? Rampage, like rampage started two minutes at, until the end of edge and Christian. Okay. That was when rampage. Okay. Started. I was about to say, wait a minute. Is this, was it a three hour show? It was like, it must have flew by. Yeah. It was yep. three hours. Okay. So then. So oh, did Christian you watch rampage? And... Hell no. Go back and watch it. The main event, uh, the women's yeah. hardcore match mm-hmm. worth your time. It w- that was worth going through. And watching, and y'all want you to watch because you need to watch uh, your Scissor Gang, their promo. Ooh. It felt like it was 45 minutes. Ooh. It was, it was not a, a, a really good promo. Like, Mm-mm. Bowens had some lines in it. You can just go back and watch it. You'll know exactly yeah. what I'm talking about. But it, it felt like, what are we doing here? So it was yeah. bad. Yeah. It no. wasn't good. Man. No, <laughs> and he man. stopped, and he stopped rapping. Like, but the main, ev- the main event was great, though. The, the main event was great. Okay. Sorry, so Radisha, then, what you were saying now? Um, well, for just Mercedes, it was a little flat, but I'm 100% okay with that. Um, you, I guess you great, brought up a great analogy about taking the training wheels off. You got to bring Russ, Mike Russ. You just got to get back into the flow and feeling it. We saw it with, with The Rock when he first came back. And then each time he was at bat, it got a little bit better. It got a little bit better. And then some of the old muscle memory came back and boom, he's sending it out the park. So completely fine with that. And again, she's a presence. So because of just that alone, women have aura, right? Can Absolutely. we say it about women too? Yeah. Okay, I don't know if that was just a guy thing. No, nah, she has if aura. If it is, we switching it. Okay, so she, <laughs> she has aura, so she could just go out there and smile. You know, we got Rhea showing her butt cheeks out <laughs> at the house show. All you gotta do is just go out there <laughs> and smile. And- we are back, man. Like <laughs> when WWE released it for social media, I was like, "Oh, we back. We definitely back." But no, no, she has aura, so she could have bombed and just went out there and smiled. And again, she commanded your attention, so I was okay. I, w- I was okay with it. I think this. Um, I don't know. We're getting a hundred percent off the top promos with her. I mean, we do. She did bring in her girl, Jenny mm-hmm. Pepperman, right? Who was a writer. Um, so I'm pretty sure that some of her stuff is probably through her, right? But it might be more bullet points. They probably come up with. Some bullet points, but maybe it's not verbatim. Um, but yeah, I, I thought the promo, I mean, you know, the one my only concern with her, she did flub her lines a couple of times, which I'm okay with. Mm-hmm. Uh, my thing for her is it's kind of like her song. It's CEO, mm-hmm. CEO. Her promo is a lot of CEO, CEO, yep. right? It's like a crutch. She's relying on it. Like she, yeah. she, she spits that out. A lot, like right. So she's gonna have these long promos where she's the C. She's letting us know she's the CEO multiple times, <laughs> and you know, in her promo, I feel like it can call it. I feel like her character itself is very braggadocious, and especially if she gets carried away with the CEO thing, she can kind of turn um, heel. Hell yeah! And mm. they kind of need. They kind of yeah. need. A, a face because I don't know who they would have against her. And going into that promo, I mean, in, in that same situation, you got Willow. Willow just comes across like she reminds me a lot of like Bailey back in the day. Like she just, you know, she's a good girl, right? And so she has the chair, and she's kind of holding it awkwardly for like a really long time. That segment was kind of weird a little bit to me, but again, they're trying to give these girls more story elements and things to do. You mentioned uh, Mercedes. I don't think she's probably cut like a promo in probably over a year because like, she's been out of the WWE for quite some time. She went and did the thing in New Japan. You know, she kind of had the microphone, but not like this. I think it's going to take some time for all of them to kind of fall into place with actually following the storyline. Well, with that point, too. And then, but you did like her first promo, right, E? I think we all did. Didn't we yeah. really, really enjoy her first mm-hmm. week's promo? Mm-hmm. I don't think I don't think it was I didn't like so her first promo in this promo I didn't think it was the best promo I ever heard I thought it need it was what it needed to be 
Okay. So then sense. now if you're asking her to do a part two, because the reason why to me it kind of just felt like what it was, she's not in a feud yet. So there is no speaking right. to said person. Hey, this is what I'm doing next Saturday night at blah, 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 blah. And this is what you did to me. There was none of that. So we're basically just going through the whole CEO thing again. And to that mm-hmm. CEO point, you got to be careful with that. Because unless she is going to turn heel, I saw somebody say Willow should turn heel. That would be no, absolutely not. Do not turn Willow heel. I think she is like probably the most natural baby face you have in the entire company of AEW. Keep her as a baby face. But once again, to, to connect that correlation to Friday SmackDown, that shot with Willow with the cheer, mm-hmm. that was the point of that segment mm-hmm. is to get that shot with Mercedes looking. That was what we wanted to remember. That is what we wanted to tell you is, hey, can we trust, et cetera, et cetera. And it was kind of like the same with, with the SmackDown piece we talked about. But I think that's why we, we got a little bit of too much CEO because it's like, all right, well, what else are you talking about? But the way she came across to me in that backstage promo segment with Chris She's and with Willow, you've done enough. Okay. Like, you're not a face talking like that. Mm-mm. And you're not a face. Keep telling me you're a CEO. Because what does that mean? You're better than us? Yep. Like, you, you're, you're higher than us? Like, mm-hmm. what does that mean when you keep saying that, like, you're the CEO? So, they, they have made sure to put some intrigue into this. Right? Like, so, you got to give them credit. Man, we talked about it previously. Osprey, they're doing a great job with. Okada, crowned him. Yes. Put that belt on him super quick. Right move to do. There's intrigue and excitement around what he's going to do and what's next for him. And they're doing the same with Mercedes because if she comes out next week and turns full blown heel, you be like, okay, I'm into it. If she doesn't, and she just maybe she takes on Willow at Dynasty, you be like, okay, I'm, I'm into this too to see where they go. So they have different ways of kind of steering the ship, and I think mm-hmm. whichever way they decide to go with, it's going to be okay. And also, I felt like the overall pacing of the show, just from segment to segment, and we actually had, and like no shots against Willow and Riho, um, but we actually had a main event that was worthy of being the main event. Ooh, man. With Talk the, about with it. The satisfying. Talk really about great it, match. But before we get into that one, I got to ask you guys a question about that, because um, I was going to skip it. Man, I wish that the, the AEW does something with these these titles. They have so many of them. I thought the the... The purpose of the Continental title was a triple. It was a triple crown title. I thought it was a triple crown with too. ROH, I it the was strong a title, crown. and this one I thought it was a, a triple crown. Yeah, I yeah, did too. They, they fake now us. it's now it's not right. So now Pump you fake. got and, and I don't know. So I, I'm assuming that the 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 top title, the number one title, is the World Championship, right? But I don't know. Are you what trying to order. rank the titles? Yeah, You're like what's the order? The like I don't know. You got the TNT. You got the International, and okay, then you got yep. the Continental. Like, right, like, what is the number two title? What's the number three title? Why do they have so many titles? What do they do? What's the, like, I don't understand why there's so many of them on this program. All right, so let's, let's try to do it real quick. So we know the world title is number one, mm-hmm. right? We got yes. that for sure. Yes, yes. Okay. World title is number one. The, what is it called? Continental, right? Continental. Yes, continental. The continental title can be and will be defended, I'm going to assume, in other companies, countries i think they've worded as, that before as the championship right but then yeah. wasn't it also what the that was what the international was supposed to that's be what the international championship that was, was supposed, supposed to be, be that it's supposed to be in other companies and because the pac was defending uh, overseas Grand and et cetera, and, back in the day doing all that yeah um so then let's so we can only assume because that's a fantastic question that maybe mm-hmm. they don't even have the answer to we can only assume by the title holders where this falls. So let's pull that up real quick. Samoa Joe's the world title. That's mm-hmm. number one. Mm-hmm. Are you putting... Cash does Continental. Are you, you, we were talking about monies, right? Like he's getting paid some big daddy money. Hold a second. Right? Who's, who's the Continental champ? Kekesta. Uh, Kekesta? I mean, not not Kekesta. No. Um, Okada. Okada. Excuse me. Okada. Okada is the... Okada. Continental. 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 No, he's not Continental. Is that what it's called? He Continental? Is. Yeah, he's okay, Continental. So what belt did Orange Cassidy have? What's that called? International. 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 Okay, so who's so look, international? See, right see there's a problem right now. Yeah. We don't we don't know the damn names of these titles right now, right? They all kind so, of So yeah, so you, you got Okada is the Continental. Okay. Boring ass Roddy Strong, who hasn't defended the title. Roddy Strong. Okay. So now international. Just by happenstance, mm-hmm. that goes to the bottom of the list. He's the bottom of the list. Because yeah, Adam yeah. Copeland is a TNT champion. So now you're asking is Copeland or Okada, which one should be second? Okada. 
Edge is at the end of his career. Ooh, so man, you can't put know, Edge. Though. You can't put that. Now, the, historically, TNT has been Ooh, I would argue. held to a high regard. But no, who, if we're going by, by who's holding it mm-hmm. right now, Okada has to be higher than Edge. Oh, I would argue. Okay, so then I would go Copeland, just for sakes of argument. Okay. Who would you go, E? So I'm going to go, I agree with Rhodesia, actually. Because, you know, like, Rhodesia is, is, is the AEW fan. So, like, she typically has to post what's going on. Over there. <laughs> so she's, she's usually more right about that stuff. But so let's talk about this, like, real quick, too. Cause we, gonna, we got a couple more topics to talk about. AEW has presented the international title, like, it was the number two title, right? You think about the title holders mm-hmm. who had the championship, right? John Moxley, mm-hmm. right? You had Pac. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right then, you had Orange Cassidy who had a hell of a run him. with the title. Yep. Run. Right, match after match, boom, boom, boom. Right, the TNT title really hasn't been the number two title since Brody and Cody had it. Mm-hmm. Like, right? That's fair. But like, now, but you could argue, but you could argue, no, just because Christians had it and he was on a hell of a run and he was always entertaining. I agree with you. I'm just saying, if I was had to play devil's yeah. advocate, I would say, but yeah, but he's been the most consistent outside of Orange Cassidy with the title of making it important. But there is no hierarchy. There is no hierarchy. Mm-mm. And that's the thing. Like, why? Like, if, if I'm new, right, and I want to go for a title, like, which title do I go after? Like, right, that's going to elevate my career like i don't know yeah. why one would yeah. go for the continental the international or the tnt like why would you go for any of these titles and then of course i forgot about the ftw title like no one goes for that anyway but that's it's there <laughs> it's there like right so that's my only problem when they get when they did the, the continental thing that's probably yeah. the one thing about the show yeah. i didn't like and i thought that it was, it was to be a triple, triple crown, crown. it's supposed to be in all of them the, i don't get it now um, one quick thing about the titles, real quick. I know we gotta leave this topic, but I can see it in a fighting way, just because we're coming off of um, UFC from last night. It could just be not, and we know it's not weight classes. But when you say why, if I come into W into AEW, what title will I go after? I think they're if done right, it is actually kind of cool that you can go in and go between different championships. Like you don't have to necessarily say outside of the world championship, like this is secondary. This is the bottom of the list. I think I kind of mm-hmm. like the idea that you can come in and be any of those champions because in, in boxing and in fighting, you're still the champion of your weight class. It doesn't mean that because you're a little, you're a, a Walter weight that you're not as good as a light heavyweight. It's just that you're the best in, in that category. And I, and I'm kind of talking on both sides of my neck, but I, I have intrigue with coming into a company that you don't necessarily have to go into if you don't get the number one world title that i have to go after this bell who's at the bottom of the list the problem is you don't have you know, any meaning between these yeah these that's, but, that's but at least when is. you when you said that at least with mm-hmm. the boxing thing that is the thing is water way light way it's like leaf feather way at least there's divisions right and so if you're a certain body type you're going to rest you're going to box in one of the divisions when you go there like i like, I don't know what the divisions. Yeah, and, that, and that's what they need to do. Like, that's, that's a really meaningful. good point. They need to meaningful. say, okay, the TNT title is only going to be defended mm-hmm. on, TNT on TNT and pay-per-view, yeah. but it's going to be defended at least once a month on mm-hmm. TNT, right? The Continental title is the workman's title. You had to, In order to get that belt, you had to go through a tournament to get to it. So mm-hmm. that's the title that is going to be defended, just say, weekly on TV. And then go through the other one. And then what's the other one again? International title? That's yeah, the title that's, that's going to be defended in other companies. Yeah. Don't know how often, I mean, but they... Okay, so now we can start understanding, hey, I want to go take this global. Give me a shot at that title. You know what? I want to show I am the best every single week. Give me this title. Hey, I want to show that I am TNT. Mm-hmm. That if you turn to TNT, the first thing you think about is me. That's that title. That, I think, would really help them. I didn't even think about clearly that. Yeah, that's a fantastic... Clearly, clearly yeah, define fantastic those titles. Point. And I think that you will have a competitive edge. Because, hey, like last, you said, they're clearly defined. Go ahead. Hey, last thing about that Continental, man. When I, I hear Continental, I keep thinking Intercontinental. Intercontinental. Like, mm-hmm. Intercontinental, right? Oh, my God. And speaking of Continental and wrestling and other promotions, right, you got Jack Perry. Jack Perry. Guys, y'all remember him? Jack Perry. I remember Jack Perry. Real, real glass. Formerly, I mean, River. I remember him. Formerly Jungle Boy. Like, right. Formal. Next guy. Former Pillar. 
Like right, former mm-hmm. pillar. Yep. Next man up got into a, a fist fight. Got into fisticuffs with CM Punk at the Wembley show. You know, said, "Hey, man, real glass, baby." Right. He ain't been around in a long ass time. He ain't been around for a, a long ass time. He been in and, I saw him in JPW, yeah. right? Yeah, but he ain't been around the AEW TV in a real Scapegoat. long time, right? That's what he said when he showed up. Scapegoat. You know yeah, and he, contract. he came out and said that he, yeah. yep, he keeps showing up his uh, AEW contact, uh, contract on uh, New Japan TV. <laughs> um, and so he, I and so that, a, that, yeah. apparently he's still um, under contract. We have no idea when his contract is up. And he hasn't had much communication with Tony Khan or AEW. They have nothing to do with his promotion. I mean, his uh, his his character and the, the that he's been doing lately. He has not apologized for what happened and what went down. Um, and so apparently, uh, I guess there was talks of bringing him back around November or December uh, to AEW. He and Tony, Tony Khan had a, a sit down or a conversation and something got apparently maybe got scrapped when CM Punk joined WWE abruptly. Um, but what do you guys think about Jeff, uh, Jeff Perry, Jack Perry, you know, in this whole situation, just for me, and I'm, I'm going to hand it off to you guys. I kind of feel like Tony Khan's mad at this man. Like you, you made me <laughs> fire CM Punk. For your like, right. Because you acting the clown <laughs> about glass, right? You're being a jerk. So now I had to fire CM Punk. I lost a big star. Oh, you thought I'm gonna bring you back in December? This man's on WWE TV. Nah, man, you can sit your ass at home right now. That's why I kind of feel like I don't know, but I was like, why else would this man be off TV? And then my last question before I throw it to you guys is this a shoot or a work? Because That's for me, it gotta be. That's it gotta be. If it's if it's a work, it, it ain't working. I don't <laughs> think like the their audience. I don't think the casual audience cares enough about it, right? And I don't think their audience cares enough at this point because at the, at, if it's a, if it's a work, who's he going to come back and feud with? He's not going to feud with Tony Khan, like right. And by the way, I think Tony Khan one day for AW is going to win the biggest hill for their company one day, but he's not going to feud with Tony Khan. He certainly isn't going to feud with CM Punk. So if it's a work, it ain't working. But if it's a shoot, like what the hell is going on? Okay, with Jack Perry, if it was a situation where they got into the fight, they being Jack and CM Punk, they get into this fight. If Tony had intentions originally, again, to let Punk go, like, you're going to get fired, and to, like, suspend Jack Perry, that's one thing. But then let him go. I'm about to talk in circles here. The I think it's a work only because now I do remember when he tore up that contract. You're not going to do that. You're not going to do that if it was shoot. So I do think it's a work, but you're right. It's not working because the average person couldn't care less about what's happening right now. Um, if Tony is mad at Jack Perry, then you just silly guy. So you lost CM Punk, your biggest star. And now you're about to lose one of your pillars too, because you're mad. It's hard for me to believe that. That he he his ego is making mm. or his him, I can't believe that because he's a businessman and he leads with his heart. I know he says that a lot too, and he shows it in some of his decisions. It's just hard for me though to believe that he he looks at Jack Perry as like a bad thing right now. So that's why I think this is all a work. It's just not really making sense. It could have just been, hey, you know what, Jack Perry? After all this, just go over to New Japan. Go go figure some yourself out. Like just get some time, some separation between everything that happened, and then I'll bring you back in. I, I don't think there's anything more than just that. And that's that's my vote, is that because they still have a re- working relationship with NJPW. So, how can this be a shoot if you're allowing him to work in NJPW? Right? So, like, for me, it's the work and it's, I think it's that it's hey, I don't got nothing for you here right now. Like, mm-hmm. just head over there and then we'll try to figure something out. They they haven't had anything for him in what like eight months, but what because when he does come back, it's make or break, and I'm talking about like that moment, right? Like that moment he shows up and whatever he does, that's make or break. If you if you try to bring him back as like the biggest hill in the company, that's the wrong thing to do because some of that fan base now hates CM Punk. Well, 
actually, and maybe that's what it was. Now talking this out, because I didn't know anything that you were bringing up, E. So say if their the original thought was, hey, we're going to back in November, December. Be the biggest hill in the company. But then now, CM Punk is in WWE, mm-hmm. which turns off the AEW fan base. Okay, you can no longer be the biggest hill in the industry or in the company because now people would probably want to cheer you because you got Phil out of here who just went to WWE and said he's back home and all this kind of stuff is a slap in the face and a spit in the face of AEW and AEW's fans. That could be what happened. So then they had to pivot to scapegoat, et cetera, et cetera. And then when they decided to, to bring him back, maybe like he comes back with somebody else when it's time. This, that's what I kind of think. I, I don't think it's doing any, him being an NJPW on his run, he's doing is doing nothing for AEW. I think it's more just for him. Like, Hey, you're still under contract. Just go work there for now and we'll figure out what we'll be do with you when the time comes if i was betting man that's probably what i would say now if it's a shoot this is unreal if it's a shoot because he should have just fired jack perry and that's that's you, the point yeah, that you, I'm... you fired punk and yeah and we know punk was the first to, to grab up jack perry and also remember that's Tony right. Khan feared feared for his life mm-hmm. with punk so we know that's that piece but it all came from him looking to the camera saying real glass cry me a river so yeah, you didn't put me in danger. You didn't put your hands on Punk first, but you were the one that caused this. There should be some type of recourse of action for you. And maybe it was. Maybe, maybe he was suspended for two, three months. And we don't know that because we still kind of don't know what's what. But for like Jack Perry to kind of double down and say like, I haven't apologized. That's wrong. And that kind of thing is just like. Yeah, he said he even asked for his release and he denied him. See, so then it's like, Hmm. Interesting. I don't, but to, I think your first question was, do you care? Honestly, and I don't. Yeah. I don't care. That's a shame. There's way too much good shit going on in wrestling for me to care about <laughs> Jack Perry. No, like seriously, and that's no knock on Jack Perry. No. I was super high on Jack Perry at one point. He can tell you. I was like, man, if they do him right, he's a major face for years in that company. And just, you know, like this pillar thing ain't really working out. Sammy ain't mm-hmm. working out. Jack Perry ain't working out. MJF showing up. You in tell Mania it. Don't say you two. tell it. He's gonna be at Mania Night too. <laughs> yeah. And so. then who's the fourth? Who's the fourth pillar? Uh, Darby. And Darby. Doctor Bruce Dar- Baker. Darby's the goat. Yeah. Doctor Bruce Baker. I was thinking she may have shown up on Dynamite on Wednesday. I did think that. I was like, okay, so maybe that's what they're doing with mm-hmm. Mercedes coming back out here to mm-hmm. cut another promo. You know, Brick like interrupts her, which I guess yeah. they still gotta wait for that. Yeah. So overall, man, like. Oh, and then that main event, we got to talk about that just really, really, really quick. I put it out on X, but this is why I could never just get with tribalism. Was to me that main event of Adam Copeland and Christian Cage. If I would have missed that because of some feigned loyalty to a said company with three letters, shame on me, Mm -hmm. right? Because I'm an older wrestling fan. To be able to see these two guys who four years ago was not even wrestling at all anywhere, was not in the business. Mm -hmm. For both of them who are best friends, that's like us connecting in a company. And we are told whatever company we're in, the three of us, hey, you guys are going to be in Detroit at Little Caesars Arena or whatever, you know, venue that we grew up in and watched. And you're going to be on top and you're going to be talking, fighting, singing, whatever for the top prize, one of the top prizes in the company. We would be like, man, sign me up. And if that was our last night together, our last thing we did together, you can't go out any better. And that was how I felt about watching them. Like for them to be together in their home country, on nationally worldwide television, fighting for a championship together, man, if, and you could watch an edge, they both worked that match as if this is it. We going there out we the go. way we want to go out, right? Like, God forbid, I didn't want them, either one of them to get hurt. But I'm like, even if this is their last match, something happens this match and they can't work again. They are going to be like, how else would I go out? This is yep. the best way of going out on top. I, and like, so for me to be like, there's a possibility I could have missed that because, oh, it's AEW or two weeks from now, which is going to be the best WrestleMania we've ever seen night one and night two. For me to miss that, because of some feigned issue of 10 years ago, WWE screwed me over because I wanted Brian Danielson to win. They didn't listen to the fans or <laughs> man, get the hell out of here. Y'all can have yeah. that tribalism. Let me enjoy all of this goodness that we're getting. It, it was fantastic. 
Yep, it was it. I, I don't know how to follow that. That match was great to me. Hey, oh, last thing, but that that um the spot with the hockey shirts. Yeah. <laughs> when they were doing, because like it was it was a little like it was a little contrived, right? <laughs> but you had you had to you had to give in to that. You had to let you had to get, give in to that, like yeah, right? Because I mean, it's. About- the blood in that one match, the oh, the, no, pay, no. the fake blood in that match. Like when he came out and he poured that bucket of red stuff over him. Oh, it's that. that visual. It's, no, it's cheesy that. and corny, but it was fun. <laughs> That's okay. Fighting in the final in the penalty box, like all that. That was yeah. that was perfect. Yeah, that, that was perfect. perfect. You could have done that in WWE, yeah. but like, because yeah. it's, it's, like, it's like it's like it's like why is Christian putting it on the shirt, right? Like maybe he's yeah, knocked right. out he's and he don't and he don't know what he's doing. Like maybe that's but you got to give into that moment, right? And then and embrace what's happening. Yep. Shout out to them, man, and, and shout out to AEW for being able to give like these legends this opportunity. Goes back to what I said just a few months ago. Like AW can be that destination spot for a Sheamus, right? When he's done with WWE, I say a Drew McIntyre when they're done, they've done everything they can. All right, but now let me go out on my terms. Where can I do that on the biggest spotlight possible? That's not WWE. Now there's there's a spot for that where they don't have to do an NG shot, you know, in front of 500 people trying to leave properly. They can do it somewhere that is a viable, you know, viable company. So. Goldberg. So like, so when uh, after Mania, if 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 it goes aw- awry, like it don't go down the way it's supposed to go, you know, Rodiz and I could talk about Goldberg <laughs> finishing his career the right way in AEW. I hope Oscar follows his ass and takes yeah. him out. Yeah. Rough. Put his fingers in the rough. Check your finger with me, stay with it, bro. But we out of here, y'all. Uh, Wednesday, we already got a jam-packed show. We ain't even watched uh, Raw. So we'll see what happens with Punk and Drew. And I think Jay is uh, in the main event tomorrow night, I think they said. But uh, we got that we're going to talk about. We are going to do the Mount Rushmore of Mania matches. So now we're just going to talk our top four WrestleMania matches of all time. Of all I have time. a hot take surrounding NXT that I want to get your guys' thoughts on. It may not be hot or maybe super scorching. And I think, and I, I tweeted this out yesterday, I think I'm ready to talk about how Roman Reigns has been a baby face on his entire four-year run. I think I'm ready to kind of dissect that so we can talk that too. I've been waiting. I've been waiting. And then when he released that new shirt, he, you brought it up earlier. What was it? Uh, family above all. Family above all, right? Ain't no hill saying that at all. So we can talk about him being a babyface through this, through a different lens. I think that that'd be a fun conversation. So we got that in, who else knows what? Because wrestling just never stops, which is great. So you freaks go out there, go on X, go on Instagram, go on TikTok, watch that Rhea Ripley video another 30 times. Okay, because that thing is doing platinum diamond numbers. I could not, not see that video last night when that hit. It was on like every social media account in the world. So check that out. Check us out, of course, I told you guys already. Follow us. Uh, all of it. Tweet us, all that kind of stuff. Y'all know what to do. Rankings, five stars, all that kind of good stuff. He just put in the chat to send it to him. I will send it to you, my good man, so you can watch that. You can do a <laughs> deep dive swear, y'all on have Wednesday's on it. podcast. On we out of here. I'm, I'm about to send it to the e- Actually, room. I'm going to just do it right now while we're on the... Uh, I mean, I'm literally like this only non-snitch in this right room. Now. Mm-hmm. Y'all call each other out about all the stuff. Like, when, so? we no, die, when we die, are y'all going to read my, my messages out loud? Hell yeah. <laughs> Why would I not? Oh, we already get that. Oh, yeah, you should have heard what Rodisha said. Hey, you got to give it up like you did on, <laughs> on Monday night. We get it. <laughs> there you go, sir. I just sent it to you. Enjoy, my good man. Wow. Enjoy those 42 seconds. Man, I'm condoning this. Wow. Everybody else, we would talk to you guys on Wednesday. <laughs>